<laughs> I see, baby girl. I see you. Hi, Kenny. Hang on just a minute. I got to fix my settings. Don't knock anything over, little girl. All right, let's fix this. Is a little off here. Mm hmm. Sorry, got to do all this after I hit live. Hang on, guys. Cat's going to keep messing up my lighting. <laughs> oh, how's everybody doing? How's your weekend? Hi, Julie Topaz. Hi, Stars. Hi, Essie. Kitty, hi, Joycey. You're up early, Joycey. Um, artist wannabe, Nancy, Wee Hootie, Diane, Marianne, Kimberly. Hi, everybody. Cat's been playing with this. <clears throat> okay, so still not. I need to bend this up a little. No, 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 no. Okay, gotta. I'd have to put them out. Uh, uh. <sighs> They're so curious. There we go. That's pretty good. All righty. All right. Hi, Janet, Pecola, Cora, Rebecca. Oh, let me tweet. Get everything going here. I just put creative something in the title because I'm going to do a whole bunch of stuff. So, and, and I don't know if we're going to do pan pastels, depending on if when we test this speedball stuff, um, I have my Inktober giveaway. I have a thing I want to read it from Pecola. I'm working on a little zine. So it's like, it's a hodgepodge of creativity today. Hi, cat queen. Let me tweet real quick, guys. In the morning. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lincoln profile. All right, there we go. Hi, Kia, Kimberly, Melissa. I know I'm missing some people. And if y'all are just joining or if you're watching the recording, I do a little chit chat before I hit um, uh, before I hit record before we do any projects because I like to say good morning to everybody. Now there's a shadow right here. Where's that coming from? Maybe from my not sure. Let's see. There go. <clears throat> Hi Teresa, Kimberly. I'm sure I'm missing. Hi. Oh, there's Terry. Where's my phone? <laughs> So hope everybody had a good weekend. We did. We were really busy and finished cleaning out the garage this weekend. So it was a good weekend. When you get a garage cleaned out, yeah, that's a good weekend. <laughs> Let me see here. Soundboard. Where's my good morning, Terry? Wow. <laughs> Uh, good weekend, Terry. Did you go do any out outdoor stuff? I, I saw you making a mess in an art journal, <laughs> but I didn't see any uh, I didn't see any outdoor stuff this weekend. Hi, Mitz. Hi, Dot. Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Nick and Tina. Nick and Tina have been putting up um, color book coloring. If y'all don't follow Nick and Tina there, you can grab their link. Mitts, I'm sure I'm missing some people. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Hope y'all had a great weekend. <clears throat> we got a new electric blanket for the for the bed. This is the first time the cats have been on an electric blanket because, you know, we got them less than winter ago. And then, uh, anyway, so... Um, <laughs> 
were calling it novocating the cats. They lay on they lay on my bed with the electric blanket on, and it's like novocaine. <laughs> So we're calling it Novocating the Cats. <laughs> Hi, Catherine. So, yeah, so I got a few little things to do, and I don't know what, it, it, you know, if any, if all else fails, we'll color something. <laughs> we'll color, uh, we'll color something with pan pastels if all else fails. I'm going to do, uh, we're going to do our Inktober giveaway. <laughs> I know, I know, Terry, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so just come on. I come on a little early to chit chat and say good morning to everybody. So, if you are new to the channel and you don't like to hear a bunch of chit chat amongst the chatters, and I leave the chat up so people can read the chat so I can see what we're talking about. Hi, Annette. But um, you can just fast forward past that. Hi, Leanne. <laughs> Uh, but this is how the fibs, the friends in the box, do it. Hi, Loretta. <clears throat> so, yeah, I was working on uh, another zine. And so I did fold a sample one to show you how when you make a zine and um, you unfold it, what it looks like so that you know how to, uh, if you make copies. So I'll show how to do it. Where's that book? I want to still have that Oh, let's see. Ah, here it is. I know I've shown this a whole bunch of times, but this old book, <laughs> I think we've bought it out at Amazon. And by the way, Pacola, I am setting up my Amazon, so have no fear. Pacola has been after me to get that Amazon up, girl, girl, get that Amazon up. Because I just have the Amazon, Hubster and I have a Amazon together. But if I do something where I want to promote something, you know, from here to Amazon, I want it to be my Amazon, not our Amazon under Hubster's email. So I'm going to start a new one. I tried to go in there and change the email and change the name and almost deleted my whole Amazon account. So I said, I can't risk that. So uh, I'm going to just make a new Amazon under my name. Hi, Eileen. Hi, Zozu. Um, who else are you? You have to speak English here, okay? You have to speak English, Zozu. Zozo. You have to speak English. Um, hi, Jean. So anyway, I'll I'll show this again because this is a fun old book. What how what year did this come out in? Um 2006? Yeah, 2006. But it's a fun little book. And uh, it's like old school zine making. Old old school zine making. Hi, Patricia. So, yeah. Hope everybody's doing well. Anybody working on anything fun? Janet, you got plan what plan for what you're gonna do today on your stream? Hi, Kimberly O. I know I'm missing some people, guys. I try to catch everybody at this, you know, in the early, early part of the stream. Hi, BDI Beth. <laughs> Just love saying that. Still working in your comp book. That was you're doing awesome, Terry. I love all the layers on your hands. <laughs> uh. Oh, oh, I showed y'all Denise's Halloween costume when she was one smart cookie. Well, I gotta show y'all. I got one from Annie off of Facebook. Let me um let me find that real quick. I'll show you Annie. So, you know, y'all know the song, you know, from okay, the creepy and the kooky. You know the Adams family? Okay, well, here's Annie. This was Annie. My other daughter out in L.A. Here's her. Oh, let me turn down the light. Hang on. So it shows up. Here's Annie's. That's. Uh, <laughs> this was her Halloween costume. <laughs> From the Adams family. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Isn't that cute? <laughs> oh. 
I know it's so cute. Yes. Yes. Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> Joycey. <laughs> uh, hi, Elizabeth Spooky House of Books. We're going to picture mythogra mytho mythographic animals by Joseph Cat and I think I don't I think I have that. I'm not sure. I don't recognize the author of the artist's name. <clears throat> yeah, it's Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> Kia. Kia and Joycey. <laughs> yeah, cousin it. Yeah, I couldn't think of the name there. Cousin it. Yeah, cousin it. Yeah, there we go. Wednesday and Cousin It. <laughs> I'm teasing Joycey. So that was cute, I thought. I guess that's her, the little, I don't know, it's got a hat on it. I don't know if that's an actual, like, bag, like a bag to put your candy in. Maybe she, this is how she handed out the candy. She she handed it out of like if this if that's a bag. <laughs> oh, so yeah. <laughs> Highlight and laughter. Welcome from Germany. I guess y'all are y'all still are y'all four hours or five hours ahead of us in Germany in e in EU. I'm not sure. Since the change, the time change, I'm not sure if UK, are y'all four hours now ahead of us instead of five since our, or is it now gone to six? It might have gone to six hours now. Oh, thank you, Patricia. I just finished a mytho mythomorphia page. It was the serpent lady. Oh, okay, Stephanie. Do you post on Instagram? Five hours at the moment. Okay. Okay, so it's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, so it's six hours then because it's 8.40 here. So if it's 2.40 there, that's six hours. Uh, Light and Laughter's in Germany. She says it's five hours there. You, Linda, you're in UK, right? Okay. Well, then I don't know where, I don't know where Linda is because it would be one. Okay. Six hours in Germany. Okay. The Netherlands. Okay. Thanks, Linda. I couldn't remember. Okay. So it's still five hours to UK. Hi, Bob. Hi, Nancy. <clears throat> Hope everybody had a good weekend. Hi, Susan. How you doing? Too confusing and involves math. I'm out of discussion. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Not so. So if I'm trying to catch, oh no, Nancy, trying to catch. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. I'm just saying hi to everybody. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Pacola. Yeah, y'all use all caps when you're talking to me. I'm just kind of reading chat saying good morning. Hi, Joey. 
Hi, Connie. We're going to test your, um, we're going to test the um, speedball stuff to see if how it works as a palette. Stupid crackle paste is not crackling. Um, I think it all depends on the type of crackle it is, Linda. There's so many different brands and types. Hi, Katrina. Does that? Yes, it had a land. The mouse has worn, has worn out so far. <laughs> need cats, Nancy. You need cats. <laughs> oh, that's nice, Melissa. Oh, well, thanks for stopping in the chat. You can lurk all you want. Lurk away. Hi, Norma. Hi, JL. Patricia. I'm sure I'm missing some people. Thanks, everybody. Let's say good morning to everybody. I used to get so upset with crackle paint. Yeah, it can be it, it can be tricky. It can depend on what, what kind it is, what you're using it on. Um oh has, has Katrina been sick? I had I didn't know you'd been sick, Katrina. Hi Kim. Hi Joan. Aw, okay. Okay, Joan, thanks for checking in. Have some, I hope you, you know, you, y'all have peace in your family over the situation. How did the cat, um, just that, the video I posted, Connie, was the last time you, that's what they did. <laughs> Oliver chases a stick and he's fine with it. And uh, Malibu just sits there. Um, I know. <laughs> I'm sure there's tons of cats you can rescue, but you know, take you don't want to have a cat just for the purpose of not having mice, unless you have a farm with a barn and it's going to be a mouse or a cat, you know, out on some land or something. Thanks, Julie. That was a sweet comment to Joan. I still didn't see what was wrong with Katrina. Hi, Galena. I'm sure I'm missing some people. How many cats do I have? Just have the two, Oliver and Malibu. Oh, your oxygen, but you're much better. Okay. Well, you take care of yourself, Katrina. Uh, I didn't know you were having some oxygen issues. <clears throat> Hi, Zeely. Yeah, when I watch other people's recordings that we all hang out on, for the most part, I don't follow the chat. Um, I'm watching the video while I'm working. Like if I go watch and I I'm behind on Sammy's. I'm just using her as an example. Um, Cause I know a lot of y'all hang there too. I don't watch, I don't watch the chat. I just watch, I just have the video running, the recording running so that I can work while I'm watching. So I don't keep up with a lot of stuff going on. Hi Robin. Hi Suze. <clears throat> Hi, Jayla. I think that's how you say it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, let me turn my fan on here. It's getting a little warm. My head. It's getting. I think it's going to rain later and drizzle, and it's supposed to um, rain tomorrow. I'm glad I early voted, so I don't have to worry about that tomorrow okay so okay Joycey yeah I got caught fresh coffee made but I still have some here so <laughs> so yeah let me show you all my daughter one more time in her costume I showed Denise's last week 
And uh, so it's so cute. Adam's family, cousin It and Wednesday. <laughs> she had a Halloween party for um, for my other grandson out there and his friends. So this is this is how, I guess how she hosted the the party. <laughs> uh, yeah, I forget where you are, Nancy. Where where are you? I'm sorry, I forgot. Atlanta gets all our weather the next day. Yeah. Oh, good, Lynn. You got every, you were on the ball then. Hi, Kim. We went as a group and voted last week. Our boss let us have time to vote. And congratulations on your son's graduation, uh, Julie. I saw that on either Twitter or Instagram. I don't remember now. <laughs> I bounced back and forth. Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> oh, they, <laughs> I clicked on allow comment and the, it said another moderator already handled this. And I went like, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, we used to live there, Nancy. Yeah, we used to live there. Um. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jean, I didn't know you had a dentist appointment. Jean says she has to go brush her teeth before she goes to the dentist. <laughs> okay, Jean, talk to you later. Jean, are you streaming later? Unless she's already gone. Are you streaming later, Jean? Oh, <laughs> I bet you are. Oh, well, of course you are. Of course you are, Julie. <laughs> I didn't see Jean's answer. All right, guys. Well, we've been chatting for about 20 minutes. And I, that's about like what I like to do, chat for about 20 minutes, say good morning to everybody. And I know more people are going to come in. If new people come in, guys, make sure and make them feel welcome. Um, hi, Karen. Oh, um, yeah. Hubster was in the military. We were there, Nancy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here we go. I'm going to put the zine stuff away for a minute and the cat's toy. They love this brush. They were playing with that. I'm going to set this aside for a minute. And I got my X Acto knife, which I have stuck up in the um, foam stuff up there so that the cats don't get that. All right, so I do want to, well, let's get, let's see, let's take care of all this business first. All right, so this is part of my zine thing here. Um, Connie had sent some of this. I'm not going to do this yet, but I was going to say what we're going to do. Connie had sent this, oops, Blair, uh, Connie sent this, um, speedball and she'd sent it once and it didn't get here fast enough for Connie. So she sent it again <laughs> via Amazon. So she sent it twice. So uh, what I thought I would do, Connie, if it works, I don't know if it's going to, I haven't tested it yet. Um, hi, Rebecca. Okay. All right. Light and laughter. See you later. You behave too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if it works as a, like this, I use a sponge with the pan pastels as a little mixing palette. And so I'm going to test to see if this will work as a mixing palette. And if it does work, Connie, I'll send the other one to Sammy. If it doesn't work, then I'm going to use it for carving and we might do some, uh, rubber rubber stamp carving <laughs> so if it works i'll send it to i'll send the extra one to sammy because i won't need to and she could use it if it works i haven't tested it yet i waited to do it do the test here okay so we're going to do that in a minute so there's two projects we got to do um hi vicky i'm sure i'm missing lisa I'm sure I'm missing some people. Okay, so we're going to do that. I'm going to get the glare away right there for a minute. So we'll test that as a palette. Then I'm going to do our, oh, I want to read something from Pecola here. And then I want to do our 
I want to, and I'll do this here in a little bit because I want to make sure more people are here. Not that you, you don't have to be here for this, but if there's anybody that is here right now, if there's anybody here right now that is backing out, did not finish their Inktober, can you tell me now? Can you tell me now if you are backing out? I had a couple people email me and said, I didn't finish. Take me off the giveaway list. So if you did not, hi, Faithful. If you did not finish your Inktober and you are here, make it easy on me and tell me now. <laughs> Okay, because uh, I'm going to number these in a minute and do a random drawing. And I'm going to kind of wait and see if anybody's going to answer here. And so this is what I got. I went ahead and went to Hobby Lobby and got uh, something. I was going to try to find a book. Okay, so Katrina, you're backing out. Okay, let's see. Katrina's backing out. Let me take a minute and get this. Diane, okay. Diane, and some of them are in, in alphabetical, and some of them I just wrote in later as people as people joined. I added them down here. Okay, Connie. Okay, Connie, did I? Yeah, I already took you off, Connie. Yeah, last week. So is there anybody else here that wants me to take you off the list if you did not finish your Inktober? Loretta, you should have finished them over the weekend. That's why I waited till Monday. I waited till Monday so that everybody would have time to come finish them. Oh my gosh. Hi, Dana. Dana, are you are you on the list? You want off the list? Are you saying you want off the list, Dana? I just see you wrote your name. Do you want off the list? Yeah, and that's okay. I mean, if things happen. Things happen. Hi, Ashley. Off. Okay, thank you, Dana. Dana's off. <laughs> hey, this will be easy. We'll just whittle it down to one or two people. <laughs> and then here's the people that I'd added. Judy, Marie, Selcat, Kim. Kim L, Loca Four Crafts, Debbie, Debbie R, Jennifer, um, uh, Jen Lost and Found, Natalie, Leather and Jade, Stephanie, KZ, Grace Hart. She's on Twitter. KZ's on, um, I think, Instagram. So anyway, I, I'm just trying to. Hi, Mark. So here's what I'm going to do. Some of you I know, I already know that y'all did it. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll send it to her. Connie, you should ask her for her address if you want to send her something. But yeah, I'll send her one of these if it if it does in fact work for pan pastels. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is after I'm going to number these uh, minus the people that aren't here. Let me get probably a red. Probably be easier if I get a red. Let's see here. A red marker. So I'm going to number the people that are left. And whoever, um, whoever's name is picked on random.org, then I'm, I got this little book. I got this and I picked this book specifically because it felt like it would work well with pen. I haven't tested it, obviously. I'm not going to test it. This has a little belly band on it. Um, this has to do with... Um, when you buy from buy this product, it helps schools. So anyway, but it felt like it had a good ink surface for ink. And then I bought these pigment Pigma, Pigma um, Sakura Pigma pens, and they're uh, it looks like two brush pens and one fine point pen. So I got these for the giveaway. What do y'all think? Is that a good is that a good Inktober giveaway? Oh, hi, Karen. Okay, well, sleep well. Thanks for stopping in. Are you on the list, Karen? I don't remember. See, I can't remember everybody that's on here. No, I don't see you. So, um, 
You like that for oh good, Lena. I'm glad. Looks good to me for the giveaway. Thanks, Terry. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna wait maybe about let's see what time is it? Maybe about 30 more minutes because it's early still, and some people aren't, you know, a lot of people aren't here yet. But that's what I'm gonna do. I want to uh I'm gonna number everybody here, you know. I'll just start going down the list and numbering everybody with a red pen and go all the way down, skipping the ones that aren't doing it. And then I'll go on random.org, pick a number between one and however many are left. You use those pins in your Inktober and they're awesome. Oh, good, Jeannie. Pins are always good. Yeah. Um, Queen, it's already over. Inktober is over. It was... It was drawing something in ink every day for 31 days in, 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 in October. Mr. Jake Parker, if you want to go look up Inktober, if you've never heard of it, but it's over. It was, it was over. I just gave everybody the rest of the um, uh, weekend to finish up their Inktobers. And, uh, and I will ask you to prove to me that you did it. If you're, if I don't follow you on Instagram, Twitter, if I don't know you, um, you know, cause I don't know everybody on this list. And so I'm going to ask you to show me your Inktober. Okay. Um, oh, Loretta, did you want off the list? Did I keep you on? Oh yeah, no, I scratched you off. Yeah. Hi newbie Cheryl. Um, so anyway, we're going to do a giveaway for this little, little journal which seems good for ink and the little pigma sakura pigma three pins there's a fine tip a medium brush and a large see there you know i didn't i'm not taking them out to look at them oh there they go there we go so i thought that would be good for inktober so we're going to do that here in a minute all right so real quick i want to read this email from and i did ask pecola Hi, hi, guys, and welcome, Queen Sassy, Deb, Queen Sassy Deb. Um, you failed, Mark. Were you on the list, Mark, to do Inktober? I did like your pumpkin, Mark. No, you weren't on the list, Mark, so you didn't sign up for it. Uh, but I did like your pumpkin, Mark. <laughs> Mark did this, uh, like one of those uh, paper mache type. Uh, you know, that hard paper mache product stuff you can buy in the craft stores. And he had these uh, wood slices and he decorated the bottom of the pump pumpkin with the wood slices and he put flowers. It was nice. It was, it was nice, Mark. Okay, Ashley. Yeah, this is my fourth year. And I'm going to pick a couple of my favorite cat uh inktobers and that's going to be i'm going to make little prints of them i just make like little you know a little a little small you know four by five four by six postcard type size um make some little prints of a couple of those and i'm going to for my um you know the people that support the channel on super chat or on um paypal tip jar and then, so i'm going to do that and i'm also thinking i'm doing a doing a little zine um i'm not going to do a probably very wordy anything it'll probably just be some some drawings on there but i'm going to talk about zines too okay so let me read this letter from bacola she said i could read it what happened to my pumpkin yeah i still have it yeah i won't have it for long though <laughs> yeah. i won't have it for long because i you know you can't keep a real pumpkin and I don't have anybody to give it to. Yeah. Okay. So, dear Dee Dee, I just want to say thank you. In Society of Idea Collectors, episode 14. And if y'all don't know what the Society of, of Idea Collectors, I have a playlist. I think we're up to 42. What, a, what number are we on, Pacola? I don't remember. May, if you just know off the top of your heads, over 40. We have over 40 Society of Idea Collecting um videos and essentially what it is it's generating ideas collecting them in some form in a book and, and it could be any kind of book you want if you want to um if you want to be in the society of idea collectors it's really it's really just a way for you 
make some cat stickers. Um, I don't know if I'll make some stickers. I'll have to see, Connie, if I can, uh, if I have time to do the stickers. But I could make some cat, um, little cat prints, you know. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so it's just a way for you to collect your ideas, whether you do it in three ring binders, traveler's notebooks, a composition book, it doesn't matter, a sketchbook, however you collect your ideas, your sketches, your notes. And so we just, and, and Jean's the one that named it Society of Idea Collectors. And it's the acronym is SOIC, hashtag SOIC, Society of Idea Collectors. And I try to do one to two, usually it ends up about one a month, sometimes two a month episodes on it, uh, on, on, on the show. And sometimes it's not, hi, Ian. And Ian did an awesome watercolor on his YouTube channel. Y'all need to go. Hubster and I watched it together. And Hubster goes, oh, wow, that looks so difficult. And, you know, I've only done a few watercolors. So he probably didn't sit there and watch me do them. Like I did Brad's boots. And, you know, you've seen some of my watercolors. I don't do a lot of watercolor. But he looked at Ian's and, and was just like all in awe of it. He was all amazed, Ian. He was going, oh, wow, that's that looks really difficult. He loved he loved Ian's. Um, I think it's a Venetian um, like gondola and and, and anyway. So uh, <laughs> Hubster really liked it. So y'all make sure and go watch that. Okay. So anyway, uh, she says I. She goes on to say, I just wanted to say thank you. And in Society of Idea Collector episode fourteen, you started us on a new project called Syllables. <laughs> we start a lot of new projects, don't we, guys? You told us to find and save things that speak to us, things to use for ideas, inspiration, and collage in our art project. That is how I describe your syllables project. And Pacola's good at describing things, and she keeps me on task. Pacola is, I mean, all my mods are awesome, but Pacola really, like, takes it serious. Not that you guys don't, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the Society of Idea Collector Syllables, and here's her description. This is how she described it. The Society of Idea Collector Syllables are a collection of bits of anything that speaks to us or sparks our interest, organized into a binder or book, ready to be used in creating pages for calendars, journaling, art, and all our other visual ideas. Our Society of Idea Collecting Syllables will help in developing our own unique creative voice. <laughs> Terry. <laughs> so that's how she described the syllables project. I took your advice and started ripping and cutting things out of all different kinds of publications, junk mail, and whatever. That is where most of my ideas for Inktober came from. I didn't have to go scratch. <clears throat> excuse me, I didn't have to go scrambling trying to find subjects because I had my syllables. I didn't directly copy anything in my syllables, but I did get my ideas and inspirations from there. I have syllable binders and files full of things cut out and are just and one just for quotes and words. Last year, I tried Inktober and only got to day 11. I only got that far because finding a subject was so very difficult. This year I completed it because of my syllables, although some of my entries were later were late because of the hurricane. Like you, I didn't end up doing the syllables calendar journal, but I'm so happy that I did do the syllable system as that is what really helped me the most. About the same time you did that episode, Jake Parker did a show where he said, quote, you should always be contributing to your creative bank account because you never know when you'll need to make a withdrawal. Close quote. That was a really good quote, but it was your episode on syllables that explained exactly how to make those contributions into your creative bank account. Again, thanks very much. And that's from Pecola. Your, your syllables are only whatever's Eileen. Well, that's okay. G uh, Julie Topaz, she failed. I failed the syllables challenge <laughs> nine weeks. I know I didn't do the whole thing either. There's so many ways you can collect it. But here's the thing, guys. I didn't mind not finishing my syllables journal, your calendar journal, because it showed people how to do it. 
you know, a lot of us do so many different things and you got to kind of pick what works for you. So if the, the syllables journaling part doesn't work for you, at least you have the idea of it. You know, you have the idea of it, write it down. <laughs> So thank you, Bacoa. I'm gonna. I will put this in a sleeve in a and put this in one of my uh, Society of Idea Collector notebooks, of which I have many. I have many three ring binders. Um, if y'all want to see here, I'll show you. Let me see if I can get to it. My syllables. Okay. So, all right. Let's see. I'm gonna take a let, take a rabbit trail here, and I don't want this to fall over. I got a big stack of projects I'm working on. So I don't want it to all fall on the floor. Okay. So this is partly my syllables and part other, <laughs> other things. So you can see my syllables binder. So in the binder is where I collect little bits of things. Now, this is not my syllable journal. This is my syllable collecting. So what I do in this one is where I collect. Let me see. Everything's going to fall out here is where I collect, like I even put little bits of washi tape on the plastic here. So there's all kinds of videos on these guys. I'm not going to go too heavily into it. So here's where I started collecting. Like here's my spring things. Here's summer things, flowers, winter things, um, flowers, fall things. So these are just little pockets and envelopes where I, I collect um, stuff to use in other projects and I put them all in here and again guys this is not every sticker I have it's not every clip art I have what this does is just reminds me of what I have so I have tons and tons of stickers and clip art and things like that but I put a few in here. So having a few things, some couple of color book pages. These are from the tattoo color book. Um, when I have a few, it just reminds me like, oh, I, I forget what I could use on this or that. Well, I have a few things put in here so that it reminds me. Don't forget you can use this. Don't forget you can use that. Here's some tags. And so I, and some of these I just have stuck on here with um, a, a, a glue dot, you know, a snot dot, as we like to, we used to call it. Do all side episodes have, um, yes. Um, there's a, uh, Melissa, there is a playlist in my YouTube, in my, U something bit me or something. In my YouTube uh, playlist. I think I have about 10 or 12 or 15 different YouTube playlists and I have a society of idea collecting playlist. I try, I've tried to make sure they're all in there, but you know, I might've missed one or two and they're not, then they might not be listed in there, but so I have all kinds of stickers. So I don't have all my stickers in here, but I put a few stickers in here to remind myself to use my stickers, right? So all these little tags and little papers and, um, you know, all this stuff I put in. This is my syllable collection, if you will. And, but it's not every, like I said, it's not every piece of everything I have. It's just some to remind me to use it. Some from Flow Magazines. Hi, P. Jean. Welcome. Yeah, I will, newbie. I will. Yeah, I'm showing you first my syllable stash, if you will. We'll call this one the syllable stash. And then, um, so you can see, and there's there's like, you know, some of these have, you know, five or six pages of stickers in here. There's all kinds of pages. But it just reminds me, labels, stickers, you know, here's some little... Um, some little uh, stamped acetates. These are from um, uh, Blue. Oh, I forget her, her exact name on online. Blue, not Blue Stamper. Uh, not Blue. Anyway, she sent me some of those acetates. So, and then just cutouts. Here's some vintage bottle caps. Just all different, just little scraps, if you will. Um this right here is very old. <laughs> this is where, uh, after I got rid of all my old photo albums that were this kind of photo album, y'all know these kind of photo albums, right? 
Well, when I got rid of the photo albums, I thought, well, I can, I'll, I'll save a few of these pages just to put some collage words and phrases in it because that's a good way to save it. But see how yellow that is? That would be your photographs. Do not put your photographs in this kind of thing. Or if you have your photographs in this kind of uh, photo albums, take them out because your photos are dying in there. Um, um, did you miss get, see my Inktober cats? I didn't. I didn't do a flip of my Inktober yet, Jean. I don't know if I'll get to that today. Um, okay. So anyway, then I have some just different. I have some notebook paper, some graph paper, different things from Flow. Different, you know, just different little scraps of things to use in different projects, right? Here, um, a little bit of stencil, a little bit of collage, just a little bit of everything. Reminding me, look, you have all this stuff. Use this stuff, labels, tags, stickers, whatever. So this particular book is syllable, my syllable stash. Okay. So let me get this closed. Oh, and I also have lots of, these were, not, were on clearance at Michael's a while back. The rub-ons. Look at these rub-ons. There were big sheets of rub-ons. Aren't these cool looking? I've used a few here and there. But look at them. And they're backwards because they're rub-ons. Right? So. Maybe I should use. Maybe I'll use some of this on. I don't know. I'll pull one of those out just because. All right. So let me put this one away. Hang on, guys. I know I'm missing some chat. <clears throat> Hang on. All right. Let me put this band back on this one. All right. Now. Ugh. Then the syllables journal, which was started last January. <laughs> and it was supposed to be a weekly thing. And uh, yeah, it lasted a few weeks. Because then we went on to other things. So this is a syllables journal. Okay, so wait, hang on. A lot of stuff's falling out. Hang on here. Okay. So, and you can, and, I, and I'm not going to go over every little detail of how we did tabs. And everyone has an, uh, a, what do you call it? Um, um, a topic or a tag. I'm just going to go right to the weeks. Okay, so how it started out, I don't know if this is interesting. Everybody's probably seen you had those rub-ons. <laughs> let me let me brighten up my show. Um, hang on here, guys. Got a little dark. Got a little dark with all the... Okay, so it was going to be each page consisted of a week. And so we started out, I, I, I explained how you could use calendar squares, like little calendar squares. You could use tape, staples. You could put, if you use tape, you could, you know, move them around. Uh, and you would write your, it's kind of like a combination, planner, diary, smash book. <laughs> you know, it's a little of all of it. And again, you could do this in any way that fits you. I did decorate it with a bunch of uh, rag flags up there and, um, and, and do collage and then draw lines for journaling. So it's kind of like a planner journal, but you can use it however you want, whatever fits you. See, I don't, I don't do planners. I don't write down, oh, today I'm going to do this on the show. Today I talked to so-and-so. Today, I don't do that. I tried to do that one year, and I explained that. <laughs> this is back in like, oh, gosh, I don't know, before I even started streaming, before all the planner stuff was ever. I did a big 12 by 12, like in one of those 12 by 12 scrapbook, three ring binders. And I took a calendar and I used basic gray. I just remember the type of uh, scrapbook paper I used. I put basic gray on the back. I made 12 beautiful calendar pages and I was going to write down everything I did for the year. <laughs> but I have a beast. <laughs> and so, um, but it's not really a cat. But yeah, but it's not like I write down everything I do. It, for me, a planner or an idea collector, something like that, is for that, exactly that, collecting ideas. 
it's for testing things out, trying new things, sketches, ideas, stories, whatever. You know, I'll write that stuff down. But as far as writing down every day, Monday I did this, Tuesday I did that, Wednesday I did, I did that for one year. And by the time October rolled around, I told y'all this before, there was September, October, rolled around, I was ready to throw the whole book in the trash. I hated it. I hated writing down everything I did. Now, Janet, she has what she calls the beast. And she does, she loves loves doing her. She writes down all her stuff she does very neatly. If you've ever seen Janet's handwriting, let me show y'all this. Um, let me show, I have a couple of her zines sitting there. Uh, so if you've ever seen some of Janet's handwriting, this right here, guys, that's Janet's handwriting, not reduced. She, that's how small and tight she can write. Look at that. She can write like that. So, oh, whoa, 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 kitty cat. Okay, be careful now. I'm going to have to watch where you're going. There's Malibu. She's usually not the one that gets in the cords, but she is bumping my ca camera. Okay, I probably need to tape that up. Um, so, let me get a piece of, let me get a piece of tape, guys, so that my camera cord is not hanging over here. Hang on, she's messing with the camera. Uh, so it's not in her face. Okay, sorry for the little bump there. She's bumping my arm. Okay, baby, you're going to have to lay down or something. So um, so we did this every, we did one a week. Yes, I know. And uh, so anyway, Janet, Janet likes keeping track and writing. And I write tiny too for my own, oh, good grief. How am I supposed to turn the pages, baby girl? She's just a purring. Soft kitty, warm kitty, little ball of fur. I forget the rest of it. I just slipped my mind. <laughs> Happy kitty, something kitty. <laughs> purr, purr, purr. Oh, okay. We'll just take we'll take a we'll take a Malibu moment. Take a Malibu. <laughs> I know she is the sweetest. And I'm telling you guys, when they lay on that electric blanket, uh, we got a new electric blanket for our bed. When they lay on my bed, it's like Novocaine. They're out, baby. They are out. <laughs> when they lay on the Novocaine, the Novocaine bed. <laughs> puts them to sleep because of the heat um you use this idea for in a passion okay baby girl you're gonna have to get down now mama love you mama love you let's get down i know they are sweet so this was like um this was the before okay the, we started it i think sometime in october november because like here was november and so i just showed how you can do different things like these, I cut these little robot guys out of a vintage catalog, um, toy catalog. And then this is one of my hand stamped, hand carved stamped. This is the Idea Collector logo. <laughs> I'm all in his blanket cave. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, purr, 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 yes. <laughs> And so these I stapled. I just, I did different ways. I wanted to, I show you that you can staple them. You can paper clip, you can glue them. Um, so this was, don't be a robot, be you. And then I'd put a uh, little, on each one, I put a little um, paper clip just to show you guys, you can, you can do whatever. And this was a lot of fun. I just, I, I have so many other projects. I can't keep up with this one too, but I wanted to show you how to do it. So this one was for, um, veterans day. And so I have some little veteran, just veteran. I have some little quotes down here. Um, Alexander Hamilton and, you know, just some different quotes under there. And I just put the flag there, some washi tape and a little, you know, and so this was, uh, this was a, a post stamp postage. These were some vintage, um, toys from the toy catalog. Yeah. Earworm now. Yeah. I can't. All right. This one now I, I only kept one B cause I gave away two of them. <laughs> So I was sketching out and drawing bees and wasps. And this was where I was collecting ideas on information on bees. This is one of my hand carved 
hand carved, you know, like out of this stuff, you know, uh, hand carved uh, stamps out of uh, that's some of my bees. This one was a drawn one. I started collecting information on bees. So I started mind mapping it. And then I had wasps, hornets. And then I found out uh, how many were there? Species. Oh, here we go. Honey bees alone have 20,000 species. So I said, well, I'm not going to, obviously, I'm not going to get through 20,000 species on those bees. But anyway, um, here was, we did a little grow a tree idea. And um, so I would just did different ideas here just to show you how to collect ideas or make your own journal with lines. So you could use scrapbook paper that had lines. You, I just drew all these lines with a ruler there. So you can journal. You could use post-it notes as your little uh, daily week for the week. Like this is Monday, January 1st. So you could have all your post-it notes January 1st, January 2nd, January 3rd. So like that. I know this is a big review for everybody. Here's some different kind of post-it notes. So I show that you could use post-it notes. Oh, this is one for Thanksgiving. So you can see how far I got. I got the turkeys cut out. <laughs> I got the turkeys. We're going to have the turkeys behind the eight ball. But um, yeah, that didn't get far. Uh, this was some things from mom at Christmas. So this was a Christmas one. I used these two little uh, Timmy girls, these Timmy paper doll girls. And it just reminded me of me and my sister. This was cut out. This was a color book. So I showed you uh, this right here. Uh, I showed how you can use elements out of a color book, color it, cut it out, and put it in a journal. This was from May Klein's May Della's books. And so I colored it in Christmas colors. Hi, Louise. Here's to a new week. Yeah, it's this is a hodgepodge day. Here's a couple Christmas cards that I kept. Um, and again, washi tape, cutouts, just little, you know, whatever. Oh, these were out of a scrapbook paper, I think. And I cut those out. Uh, here's some more Christmas stuff. Here's some stickers I didn't use, but I just liked them. I think mom, I don't remember where I got those, but it's the stuff from mom here. And then I showed how you can use these, um, eight, well, we use them for ATCs, the nine, the nine sleeve, um, baseball card, um, you know, card collecting, the nine sleeves. We, we've we always used these for ATCs, but I put one in here to show you could collect your, you know, little little things in there, right, in, in the little pockets. Um, do you collect different kinds of stickers for curating? Um, I used, I have tons of stickers <laughs> left over from, I used to do ATC swaps. I did them for about four years, back in 2000, I'd say three, four, five, back six, somewhere around there. For about four years, I was heavily involved in Yahoo ATC swaps and hosting swaps. If you've not seen my binders full of ATCs, I'll show those again another day. But if you look at my playlist, look for ATCs and I do flips through all my binders. So that being said, I don't do ATC swaps anymore. I don't have time. Um, but I do have tons of stickers from that and from my scrapbooking days. I have probably 25 three ring binders, 12 by 12, three ring binders, those big thick ones, scrapbook, 25 of books of scrapbook stuff that I did over the last, well, I haven't done it for about oh, three, four years, but um, of the, of the grands. So I have tons, tons of scrapbook, but I don't really scrapbook anymore. Nobody really does. I mean, you know, we used to have big communities of it. Two peas in a bucket and all that. Uh, has lots of those baseball card pages. Yeah. So those that's what you collect your ATCs in. Is those uh, nine by you know nine nine squares on a page. Yeah. Oh, there's probably a lot. Well, there's people here from the UK, Share Gill, Share Gill. I don't know how many are from London, but there's probably uh, quite a few here from hi AJ. AJ, um, okay. Um, I think AJ's on my list here. I'm trying to see. Again, I'm going to go back over and ask anybody that's here. If you've popped into the chat and you had signed up to be in the Inktober drawing and you did not complete, if you did not complete your Inktobers, let me know so I can scratch you off the list before I do a drawing. 
Uh, so then we started just doing, here's like a January. So here was my New Year's page. I did a little mask over a color book page. So there was my New Year's page. Um, yeah, AJ, did you do it? Oh, I think you did, didn't you, AJ? Didn't you finish your Inktober? So this was the this was my New Year 2018 page. You did? Okay, well, I'll keep you on the list. Here's uh, another one. Here's the first week of January. So these are paint chips. So with the little paint chips, I just stamped on them. Monday, Tuesday, this one I just paper clipped to it. It's a little paper clip. This is a, from a color book page. And I just uh, stamped stamped the days on there. So you can see even if this is kind of like uh, scrapbook-esque without the photos. But you can put photos in it too. You can make it like a smash book, journal, planner, idea collector. It can be a little of all things, right? So, and then here's the, just the January, I was going to make, I was going to make uh, 12 um, content pages. And uh, so, yeah, different things for January. So you can see these are little squares where you would write whatever happened to you that, that, that week, because there's a page a week. So this one we did just with little um, flags. Um. You can do pockets, you can do, you know, whatever you want. Okay, then we did into February. What did we get? So, yeah, we got a couple of things done for February. So then we started showing how you could just start with a smush of paint for your week. You don't, you know, so sometimes people go, oh, I don't, you know, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. It's a blank page. Smush you some color on there and start from that. Um. Here's just a little envelope to put some things in. Just washi tape an envelope down. Here's, this was my birthday month. So, you know, I have all kinds of things here for my birthday. This is one of the, this is from Janet. <laughs> my birthday card from Janet's there. We made little hearts out of just little pieces of, uh, you know, and these could be where you wrote your weekly, I mean, your daily thoughts, your day. It could be a daily thought, a daily project, a daily, whatever happened that day. So th for this one, we made a bunch of little hearts um, to write your information down on Valentine here, birthday card. So you can see, and I think, did I get anything into March? No, I think I just started with some blue. So that's as far as I got. The rest, the rest of the months, the rest of the months are not done. But I do have them all mapped out. But yeah. <laughs> so this was the, um, this was my um, syllables journal, as opposed to the syllables um, bits, if you will. All right. So there's that. Okay. Let's put that back for you. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, I got piles of books behind me because <laughs> I don't have a lot of space. All right. So just start watching. This is a junk journal. It's, it was a, I called it a syllables journal, uh, Kathy. Just bits of your life. Little, you know, like a syllable in a word. It's, that's why I named it that. Okay. So let's go ahead and do, let's go ahead and do our Inktober giveaway. So again, one last call out if you are in the chat and you did not you did not finish the Inktober, tell me now so I can scratch your name off the list. Um, just let me know. And I know not everybody is here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a number beside besides everybody's name that is here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think so, Pacola. It'll be around Thanksgiving that, you know, the 21st, 20, uh, yeah, somewhere around Thanksgiving. We're going to have a, a, a it, hopefully it'll be the 21st. I can't promise it'll be the 21st, but we're going to try. Um, so I am going to, yeah, but yeah, I want be here on my uh, eight-year stream anniversary. Four years on YouTube, eight years total streaming in November. Well, we are in November. And at the end of the month, sometime around Thanksgiving, I want to do a, 
you know, special giveaway. I don't know if we'll do any special projects, but uh, we'll, we're, I want to do special thank you giveaways for everybody that's been a part, you know, and just being here. Because, you know, y'all have all so supportive of the channel. Hi, Gail. I'm sure I'm missing some people coming in. Yes, you did your one quarter, Ian. <laughs> Ian, I'm going to have to, I'm going to scratch you off, Ian. But I'm, I might send you a one quarter something. <laughs> but I can in good, good conscience put you in there for only doing a quarter of them. <laughs> but it was funny. Ian, Ian said he was going to do a quarter of them. So he said he did do his quarter, but. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Carrie Ann. Okay, so well, I'm going to number everybody that's here in red. And if you are not here and you win the drawing, then I will, I would like you to contact me if you're watching this video. Or I'll figure out, you know, some, I guess you'll eventually pop in here. Because <laughs> I don't have everybody's contact information. So I didn't ask anybody for their emails, their Twitter, their Instagram. I just asked if you were going to do it. And um, then if I find, you know, if you win, I will ask you to show me. I'll just pick a random day for you to show me that you did in fact do all your Joycey did you finish I got you right here before I write you a number did you finish Joycey um you didn't say you didn't so I'm guessing you did I'll wait till Joycey answers because that's where I'm numbering up to did you finish Joycey you did okay so that way I'll have, you know, you'll have to show me that you did in fact finish. And then if somebody's not here and they didn't finish and they say, I didn't finish, then we'll do it. We'll do a new drawing. Okay. We'll do a, a new drawing for, um, and scratch that person off the list. Did Mr. Q say she finished? I think Mr. Q backed out, didn't she? I don't remember if Mr. Q backed out. Hi, Elena, Alina. I just unplugged into, I just uploaded my Inktober sketchbook. To, oh, yay, Faithful. Good for you. You finished too? Okay. I'm just asking that people that didn't finish to tell me. If you didn't finish, tell me. I don't know if Mr. Q, well, she's not here, so I'm going to go ahead and number her. Um, I don't remember if Sharon Marlowe backed out or not. I think she backed out. Yeah, I left her in just in case. Um, I don't remember if Sharon backed out or not. She's still on here, so... So again, I will hopefully find the person that wins. I'll give it I'll give it a three three days. I'll give it three days if the person doesn't contact me that I don't know. Most of these people I'm gonna know, but there's you know some new people here I don't know. They might have just popped in the channel and said, Oh yeah, I'll do it. And I've never seen them again. <laughs> uh, then I will re uh, I'll re um draw a number so let's just keep going here Fifty, fifty-one, fifty-two, fifty-three, fifty-six, fifty-seven. 50, okay, so we have 58. We have 58 people. I am Zondra, and you have, I have you on there twice, twice, Muffy? Zondra and Muffy. Do I have you on as Zandra and Muffy? Okay. Um, oh, okay. So let me just scratch you off. I'll scratch off Zondra. 
And so if 42 comes up, we'll just draw another number. Because you are on here as Muffy. Where are you, Muffy? Muffy Zandra. There we go. Okay. So now we're down to 57. But the numbers, are, you just got assigned a number. Okay. So now let's go ahead and do between 1 and 58. Hang on. I'll put it up here in just a minute. Let me get... Get it here. Um, random dot o r g. Okay. Please speak English. Um, I, I whoever you are. <laughs> yeah, we you have to speak English here, please. Yeah. Especially if it's in characters, I don't even know if we can translate that. Okay, so here we go. Random dot org. Okay, so here's the random generator. So I'm going to do between 1 and, come on, 1 and back it up, 1 and 58. Okay, so there we go. Between 1 and 58. So let's see who randomly finished their Inktober. And they'll get the little pens and pad. Let's move this. This is the this is the giveaway here. A little ink, whoops, a little pad to do inking in, and a little pack of Sakura Pigma pens. Ready? Wait for it. Wait for it. Generate. Twenty nine. Twenty nine. So let's see who's twenty nine. Twenty nine is Marie La Vie. Now I don't think she's here. So Marie La V is number 29. So I will have to get with Marie La V and see if she completed. If she completed her Inktober. If she completed it, then she will get this. If she did not complete it, then we'll do another drawing. Okay. How's that sound? So Marie La V. You, if you completed the Inktober, you will get the little, the little Inktober gifty. Yeah. So I see her around on Facebook. I'll, I'll look her up. Oh, we can find Marie. So yeah, if, and so as long as she finished it and I will ask her to show me, you know, a certain day or something, she'll mess, have to message me and show me that in fact that she did complete it. And if she did complete it, then this goes to her. If not, we'll do it again. Okay. All righty. So there's that out of the way for now. <laughs> okay. So the next thing I want to tackle is uh, the Pan Pastel Test on the Speedy Carve Speedball. So Connie sent me this to see if it would work as a palette. Okay. Okay. Uh, to see if it would work as a pan pastel palette as well as it does on the um, as well as it does on the sponge or at least comparable to what it does on the sponge. Yeah, if y'all see Marie around, let me know. Um, so I'm going to do a test here. I'll just get this piece of paper here because it's bent. I'm not going to use this one for a uh, uh zine oh and by the way i did tweet out um i can't remember his name right now but he does pan pastels and he did a pan pastel test um with the sponges the different tools versus makeup sponges so if y'all have want to see um if y'all want to see how comparable the the uh, denseness and the tool, the spongy stuff compares to different types of makeup sponges, then go watch this video. Let's see if I can, I'll tell you his name here. Um, I, it is linked in my, um, it's linked in my Twitter, but his name is Jason Morgan, his YouTube channel, Jason Morgan dash wildlife art and he does a test he does a test of makeup sponges versus the um 
tool, the soft tools, okay? So yeah, Jason Morgan dash wildlife art. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to test the speedy carve. And again, if this works, then I'm going to send this one to Sammy because Connie sent me two. She sent me one, says, see if this will work. And it didn't come like, it came like three or four days later than she thought it was going to arrive. So she ordered another one from Amazon. <laughs> what is it? Okay. I see a little girl. Uh, and if it does work, I'll send this one to Sammy who does pan pastels in her color books now as well. Okay, let me make sure my chat is not frozen. There we go. You bought mine, it works so well, smooth finish. Well, it, you know, and again, he says, I didn't test every single, I didn't test every single makeup sponge invented. But I did, I have tried some. I tried the little squares. I've tried some of the little tiny, you know, eye shadow tools. And it's not the same. This material is very dense. And what the difference is, let me just get one here. I don't want to get them all out because, you know, we got baby here. <laughs> we don't want a blue kitty. So the difference that I found, the major difference is the release. The release off of the tool. So, and right now I'm not talking, I'm not testing this. I'm just talking about the sponges. Okay, the sponges. What happens when you use the sponge? It picks up a generous amount with just a one swipe, the soft tools, okay? And it goes down so smooth, so creamy, and, and it just releases. It releases off of the tool, okay? Where the makeup sponge is that does not do this. And, and if you watch this video, you'll see what I'm talking about. Thank you, Pacola. Pacola just put a link to Jason Morgan. So y'all go if y'all are interested in pan pastels at all, he's awesome. So go follow him. Um, okay, so this is just using you look how much is coming off of that. This is just using the tool or the sponges. And it's the same thing with this stuff. Now, what I'm talking about for this and this, let me get one that I have some use. Um, okay, here's one. So what I've been using, and I asked Bernadette to invent this for us, is to make a palette about this size, or maybe a little bigger, that you can blend on. Okay, so let's see here. I just got this a small bits here. Let me just get, oops, I just stuck my finger in that. Let me get a couple of uh, skin tones here because that's what I got on this, this sponge. So what I like about the sponge material, hang on, let me get a baby wipe, clean my hands. And remember, guys, talk to me in caps if you're asking me anything. Okay, so what I like about the sponge material, the soft, S-O-F-F-T, pan pastel sponge material is you can take and put put some on the sponge okay you can put it on the sponge and you can blend on the sponge you can blend on the sponge rather than taking some of the dark and some of the light and doing i mean you can still do that but if you want the, the colors in between, you can blend on the sponge. And so I'm hoping that Bernadette will make us a big palette, you know, like a, a square or an oval of material, of the sponge material for us to use as a palette. So Pacola suggested last week or the week before, she suggested the... Um, fun foam the kids fun foam and that did not work it did not really it does it didn't release i can't explain it any better than that yeah big soft square yeah Terry. uh it it is until you use them you really can't understand what i'm talking about about because what happens is it doesn't just it it just 
I don't want to say it doesn't sit on there, but it just picks up. It, it releases off of it where on the fun, fun foam, it, you couldn't pick it up off of it. So now we're going to do the test. We're going to do the test on the square. And again, if it does on the uh, speed ball, on the rubber stuff to see if it works, because this is not porous, right? It's rubber. So not being porous, we may be able to pick up the material off of that. Um, so we're going to test it out. So I'm going to put some on here. Again, if it doesn't work, what I'm going to do is carve into this. So <laughs> if it does work. All right, so I'm going to put some down on the spot on the speedball rubber, right? And then I'm going to pick up pick up some of this color here. And it's see you can see it's blending sorta, but not really. Look, it's overlaying. See how it's overlaying that? All right, let me show you the difference here. So I'm going to put some on here. Put some on here, and you can blend it and still pick it up off. See, here it's overlaying. So it looks like this is not going to work already. Let me get a paper towel to clean my tool off. Because the, the point of wanting a bigger one of these is the blendability part. It's the ability to blend two colors, right? putting that color and then some of the dark color and then being able to blend and get that third color, fourth, or however many colors you want, right? This is overlaying. Do you, do you see what I'm talking about? So let's get a clean spot here. Yeah, it's layer. It's not blending. So let's put a little bit more here and see what we can do. And then some of the light. Okay. See, look, it's going over the top. It's not blending. So this does not work. Yeah, this does not, this does not blend. See, it's just the light color. No, no, all of, no, baby, you cannot get in my paintbrushes. No. So, yeah. Yeah, time to carve. <laughs> See how it's just, it's not blending. It's not blending at all. It's just completely covering up the dark color. Try plain copy paper. This is plain copy paper. I'm not following what you mean, Becky. Yes, I know. And uh, by the way, I, I put, uh, when we cleaned out the garage, I found a bunch of these that from Annie had stored these, uh, I'm not sure what kind of cups they are, coffee cups or whatever, but I found uh, four of these, two green and two purple, two aubergine. So I, I used them all. I put all my paint brushes in these, which it looks good, but it doesn't have a stable base. So when the cats barely bump into these, these are going to fall over. So they look pretty, but they're not as stable as my ball jars, you know, my glass canning jars that have a, they, they're like this, you know. Um, but anyway, I did put all my paint brushes in for four of these, two green and two purple ones. They look pretty on my desk, but yeah, they're not very stable. So we'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. Just use a paper. No, that doesn't work, Gail. That doesn't work. A paper towel, that doesn't work just to blend. No, the best thing, this is still the best. This is still the best thing to blend. No, it doesn't work to blend. This just comes off. It comes off on the paper towel. But you can't, you can't blend on this. <laughs> this is not conducive to making a palette. Can't make a palette out of that. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't work. Uh, okay, well, if it works for you, Gail, does I mean that just doesn't just doesn't work. Here's a here's my thing. 
this works perfectly. This works perfectly. Why do I want to do this? Right? When this works perfect, this will blend and blend perfectly. So, yeah, I just want a bigger one of these. <laughs> Fill the bottom with sand. Oh, no, that's too much trouble, Suze. <clears throat> I won't do that. <laughs> I won't fill that with sand and steal the bottoms. I just put them back in the glass jars. Y'all have too much work for me to do. <laughs> so anyway, I'm asking Bernadette if she will make this in bigger, like this size, right? If she'll make a big or bigger, you know, she could make it this big if she wants. You know, make it a nice big piece of soft material. Yeah, um, you can use, yeah, I've seen them do some blending on the, this is just copy paper. But again, why do I want to blend on here when I can blend perfectly on here? Here's the thing, this, on a piece of paper, your material is sinking in. Your, your pan pastel material, your, your pigment is sinking into the paper. It's not sinking in here. It's sitting on top. This is sitting on top. So I can continuously, I could pull off of this for, for days. It's sitting on top of this. It doesn't sink in. It's, a, it's kind of a waste on the paper. Maybe he doesn't know this trick. <laughs> maybe we need to get the, yeah. Maybe we need to tell him about this trick. This is from Sheldine. That's who I saw that trick from, Sheldine. Okay, so if you use a paper towel or you use paper, you are leaving the material. You're leaving the pigment on the paper towel. You're leaving the pigment on the paper. On here, you're not leaving it on there. It's sitting on top where you can pick it off. I, I can't explain it if you've not used it. If you've not done this, I can't explain it. This will this can work minimally. This doesn't work at all. This works perfectly. So, you know, why not do this? They're the best to blend. Yeah, that's where I got that. That's where I got that idea. Sheldeen. Sheldeen is the one that I and I always tell everybody that's where I got that idea is from Sheldeen. Now, what I would like is for Bernadette to make us a big one. <laughs> make us a big piece of sponge material so that we could have some browns over here. We got some blues over here. You know what I mean? So we can mix. We can have multiple mixes. So there we go. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. There we go. <laughs> uh, no, Natalie, I haven't. I just, I clean them off on a paper towel and they're, they're fine. They're clean. You can wash them, though. But I haven't needed to wash them because I just clean them off like that. And they're good for another go-round. <laughs> I see me. Oh, my gosh, guys. Oh, my gosh. All right. So now that we know that that does not work, it doesn't blend. It layers on top. But, Connie, it was a good idea. <laughs> it was a good idea. All right, so let's see here. Um, just like a Pecola's idea, Pecola's idea of um, trying the kids' fun foam was a good idea too, but it just lays, it, it just layers. It doesn't blend like you would think or hope it would. I, I just can't explain it any better unless you've done, done this. If you haven't done this, then you just don't know. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for putting a link to Sheldine's there as well, Pagola. Okay. So now let's see the next thing we got. Um, yeah, we might carve today. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, my gosh. Well, I do my best, guys. I do my best. Okay. It is very dense. It, it is, that's that's the, the thing about the um, soft, S-O-F-F-T, 
the soft pen pastel sponge material. You, I cannot explain it. You have to feel it. It's way denser than any makeup sponges I have ever felt. Now, granted, I probably haven't felt every makeup sponge ever invented. And, uh, <laughs> but it just, nothing works like that. And like, like it was Jason, is that his name? Like Jason was saying in that video, some of the, one of the more expensive makeup brushes that he tried, he, of the little, the little wand, the tiny little eyeshadow size, you know, cause there's that little eyeshadow size in the soft material. And he's compared that to some of the more expensive eyeshadow sponges. And they work, some of them just did flat out, did not work at all. One worked similar, not perfectly, but it costs the same as the soft makeup brushes. So why not just use the make, uh, why not just use the soft tools if it costs the same, you know what I mean? Did you cut out images out of a magazine that you are reverse collage paint? Okay, wait a minute, let me. Do you cut out images out of magazines that you reverse? Yeah, magazines, calendars, books, and all over the place, um, newbie Cheryl. I have stacks and stacks and bins and bins of collage fodder. Um, Becky, good morning, Fibs. Okay, all right. So let me go gra grab some coffee, guys. Let me go grab some coffee, and then we can do a little zine. We can do some carving, and I'll just wipe this off. Here, let's see. We can do a little um, stamp carving. See, look, this just, it's just, it doesn't matter if you're going to carve into it, though. This doesn't matter. But look, it's, it's just sunk in. It just sunk in. It can't even, you know, get it to come off. Not that it matters to use it for a stamp carving because that doesn't matter. Okay. And then I got this for some of the zine. Okay. So we got two projects here. All right. Let me go run and grab some coffee, guys. Where's my cat's? Don't want them in the cords while I'm gone. I'll be right back. Okay, I tried to hurry because I don't want the cats up here and disconnecting our cords. All right. Uh, the tissue paper, it's not tissue paper, Carol. It is rub-ons. I got it at Michael's on clearance. I got to catch my breath now because I hurried so the cats wouldn't get up here while I was out of the room. Um, no, no, Kenny, I don't smoke. If you were asking me. Oh, no, she's saying I don't smoke. I don't know who is saying that. Yeah. Sorry. I don't know who. Uh, <laughs> if you're talking about me, I don't know if you were. Okay. So Oliver. No. Nope. Yeah. No, nope, Malibu. So this CB is rub-ons. I just run up and down the stairs, guys. My studio is upstairs. My coffee pot is downstairs. So I'm when I <laughs> run up and down the stairs. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, all right. So CB, this these are rub ons, and they came in various themes. I think they came in like I don't know six or eight different themes. Do you reverse collage and cut out images in the same magazine? Um. Newbie Cheryl, let me maybe let me show you this. So, all right, baby, you're gonna have to move. I know, honey, you're gonna have to move. Let's get down. You're gonna have to move. Uh, all right, well, hang on on the collage thing, Cheryl, just a minute. 
So CB, this is a um, one of the sheets, and they were on clearance for a couple of dollars, and they're reversed because um, they're rub-ons. So I will do a little bit of rub-on on something. Just to, I pulled that out this out to use, and there's different topics. So it's very cool. Yeah, yeah, she's an awesome kitty, but I can't work and in, in when she's sitting here. Okay, so um, Cheryl, here's a sample of my collage fodder. So I'm not sure what you're asking on, do I use the same magazine? There's calendars, there's painted pages, there's magazine pages, there's old stencil bits, marble pages, magazines. Um, different types of tissue paper. So here's some of my collage fodder. This is one of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is a smaller one out of about 10, 10 different collage fodder bins that I have. So I'm not understanding your question about using the same magazine. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, you like your uh, rub-ons, Janet? Did you use them in the Beast? Did you did you uh, use those rub-ons on the Beast? Janet's journal is called The Beast, in case y'all didn't know. All right, let's see if there's any more questions that I can't answer. Okay, hey, hey, Vicki. I just saw you. Have, have you been here very long? Maybe she means when you showed us how to take a fashion magazine, collage it, and rearrange heads. Yeah, I'm. that's not collaging, though. That's just cutting out. I'm, maybe leather, you know, where I've, you mean where I'll put a different head on a different body? <laughs> no, I got tons. And Denise made me throw away two big, deep, you know, like bins that are this deep. And this, you know, huge three feet. She made me throw away at two or three of them a few years ago. So, yeah, I kind of recollected. <laughs> Where's Clans of Magazine? Do you cut images out of it? Um, you Okay, in a magazine. Do I cut things out of it? No, no, not, not really, Cheryl. I mean, I have. But I see what Leather and Jade is saying. So, like in the fashion magazine... I only have one. We the same fashion magazine we've been using for some years, where we've done different drawing things, um, like here, where I've here's where I've cut a bit out and made something separate. Is this what you mean? Like here, this she's this is glued down to this, but I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about. Because this magazine, like here, so I tore some out so that this picture now goes with this picture. Yeah. Yeah, I knew what you meant, Leather and Jay. This is what you were talking about. No, I have, I have, let's see how many I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight small ones and three big bins. So I have eight, ten, about ten different bins, and I do just throw it all in there. I I kind of explained this before. We're okay. Well, hang on, Natalie. Reverse collage is when you see me blacking out. Here, I'm trying to answer all the questions at once, and I'm still. I think I'm not doing very well. This is reverse collage, Natalie where you take a page and you black out. See how I blacked out this? This is reverse collage. Um, I'm not understanding you, Joycey, sorry. So this though is not really a project. I, I, this was not a project. Let me show you a magazine journal. Hang on. Oh. 
so this is a, an official magazine journal. This is not a magazine journal. This is just my fodder and samples. Um, here is a magazine journal where we've taken the two magazines glued together and you work in it. You, you, reverse collage things out you use part of the magazine here's where we did a little bit of uh, uh brush lettering this is just a bird we painted in and you know so the, they're just different but i'm not sure which one you're referring to sorry i'm trying to do too many things at once i think I'm trying to answer 10 questions and they're all different and I'm not doing it very well. <laughs> okay, let me put all this up. All right. <laughs> okay, now, now we're going to go back to my plans. <laughs> Uh, all right, so the zines, and I just had Janet's here. We've done many zine swaps. Now, I don't have time to do zine swaps anymore, um, but I got to catch my breath. Just hang on a second, guys. I've totally run out of air, running up and down the stairs and trying to answer, run around the room with five questions. So, okay. All right. So, these are some of Janet's zines with her actual handwriting. No, it's okay. I don't mind questions. I just can't answer. <laughs> it's just hard to answer five or six or seven at once. And they scroll off, and then I then they're gone, you know, unless somebody repeats it. So I try to try to squeeze it all in there. So these are some of Janet's scenes, and there, she has little stories and little, you know, there. I, I won't go through them all again because I've shown them many times and read them many times. And um, I just want to kind of show y'all how to make a simple zine. And our our swaps, our swaps were are based off of this zine. Okay. Um, yeah, she is a great zine maker, isn't she, CB? Um, so our zines are just based off of one sheet of paper. And I'm going to show you how to do this. So if you want to make some simple zines. So Connie, what is the meaning? <laughs> 42, Vicki. 42. Um, so we'll, we'll, maybe we'll do a little bit of carving. We'll see time-wise how we go. <laughs> That'll chill me if I sit here and carve. We might do a, a carve, a chill carve. Okay. <clears throat> so all our zine swaps are just based off of a simple, a simple zine fold and cut. Hang on. Let's turn the brightness down just a little. There we go. Not that one. There we go. And you just take a sheet of copy paper, eight and a half by 11 copy paper, fold it out. And you do want to do this as exact as you can, because when you go to make copies of it, you want it to be as exact as it, as you can. So take your time folding it all and doing the cutting and everything. You want it to be as exact as you can get it, not for the sake of the original, but for the sake of the copies. Okay. Um, yeah, did y'all see some zine, people selling zines in, in uh, Australia when y'all went? Where's my bone folder? CB, Janet. You did? Yeah, how much were they selling them for? Do you remember? Well, I don't know if you just bought them in, in uh, Australian... I don't even know what their currency is called. How much did they equate to in dollars? Do y'all remember? 
All right, so you see how, all right, let me start over because I'm talking. So you take a sheet, you fold it in half, you fold it in half again, and then you take each flap and you fold it in. And you want to be as exact as you can because, like I said, when it will matter is on the copy process. Around $3 each. Okay, so now what you have is this. Can y'all see? Was that easy enough to follow? Fold in half, fold in half, and then just fold your flaps to the middle. That's the easiest way without having to measure, okay? So now you have this, okay? So now what you do, you open it up. And when we did the swaps, after you made copies of your artwork, you had to do this with every single zine. You had to cut and fold your own zines. Nobody sent their zines unfolded, uncut. Everybody had to do their own. And we did, I think one of them was about 25. What's the most we've ever done in a swap? 25 in, a, in one batch. Yeah, and this, yeah, we just use cheap printer paper. Yeah, just cheap printer paper is what we're using too. Now you take your ruler, preferably metal, <clears throat> exacto knife and you see the two in the middle right there see that line right there the two in the middle you cut the two in the middle right along the right along the top there right along the line my ruler slid just a little okay so you see how we got it now see are, are we still with the tour people <laughs> I'm recording, Connie. Okay, so now what you do is you take the two in the middle and you flat, you bend the flaps up in the middle in those two like that, okay? And then all you do is fold it like this, flatten it all out, close it up, and you have a little book, okay? You got an eight-page book. Front cover, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Back cover is eight. So this is how you make a little mini zine. Now, pay attention to this part. If you're if you're watching the recording, you don't have to do it this second, guys. <laughs> you don't have to do it now. What you want to do is take and and for a sample page, you want to do this for keep one handy. Keep one handy. <laughs> Page one. I know it sounds so simple, but you'll see why in a minute. There's page one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The reason you want to do this is after you do your art, you want to make copies to give away. So how you make copies is, is you open it up and your art is all done on this side. You make a copy then you refold and cut for each individual zine that you give away or sell. Now, this is why this is why you want to number them. Look how the numbers are. Half of them are upside down, and they're also not in order. Okay? This is why you want to be aware of the number. If you are telling a story in your zine, if you're telling a story in your zine, you want it to be, you know, you want the story to progress. This Janet did a half scene while on this one. I think. No, wait, one, two, three, four. No, she did a full one. Okay. So what you want to you want to be able to do is you don't want to do your art sequentially like like this. One, two, three, four, like you know, here, here, here. Because then when you open it up, this is what it looks like. And and so when you go to make a copy, it's gonna, it's not gonna work. Let me show you on the Janet Zine here. Okay, see how the story now is out of order and half of it's upside down. Let me put it back together for you. So when you open it up to make copies, this is what this is what it's going to look like when you make a copy. Okay, so you you want to be aware of your numbering. 
so that when you do the art, you're not just opening it up and drawing page, you're not just drawing it here, here, because this is what's going to happen when you open it up. Uh, is that making sense? Thank you, Vicky. So, yeah. So, so when you when you uh, you want to be aware of where the pages fall, okay. So you can do your zine like this, and I can draw like, um, let's say, I don't know, maybe I'll do a little octopus or something because we were doing those earlier. You have to you have to be aware of of the page numbers when you open it up and refold it. For instance, okay, so let's just say, well, let's do it this way because it has numbers on it. All right, so let's say I have my art on all these pages and I make a copy. Okay, I make a copy, I cut it, and then I go to fold it and I fold it this way. Now I've got three, four, five, six, one, two. You see? Bye, Rebecca. So you want to be aware of the way it goes when you refold it. Bye, Rebecca. Have fun. Like Janet's here. Finished one. All right. So I don't know if we'll do one. And I just wanted to show you all that because... Got you a little booklet. And so when we did our zine trades, what we would do is all you had to do was make one zine. You just made one zine and you copied it and then folded it and cut them all yourself. See this? See how it's cut right there in the middle? You made, you cut them all yourself, folded them all yourself, and then you would send in, I forget how many we swapped at a time um 10 so one we did 25 i don't i think we did i think 20 20 fit in a business size envelope because look how thin they are guys that's one sheet of copy paper right okay and janet she you know being the overachiever she did she also made little she also made little envelopes for them this is the story of the ugly duckling. She made a newspaper article, a newspaper article about the missing ugly duckling, and she packaged them all inside of a little <laughs> milk carton. Uh, <laughs> uh, why, newbie Cheryl? Why is it hard to believe people sell them? They're just little mini pieces of art. They're mini, mini pieces of art. <laughs> And so, yeah, Janet's fit in a little, uh, well, it just fit inside the little milk carton. <laughs> I know they are adorable. Janet makes the cutest scenes. I have all her little stacks of them here. Okay, so um, maybe we'll do something. I was just thinking of maybe a cute little you know, an octopus uh, with tentacles going across the pages and maybe a little story, you know, somebody, maybe his name is Octo, you know, so, <laughs> a little cheesy. Anyway, and just doing, you know, his little tentacles going across the page and some coming up this way. And, you know, anyway, just having a little uh, story of a little octopus go through the whole pay through the whole book. Something like that. We'll see. We'll see if we have time for something like that. Okay. And then, oh, and then I wanted to show you a little piece of this rub on. Let's pick something here. Let's just pick. 
let's pick this little bit of a floor, not a floor de lis, a little flourish. Just to show you here. So if you want to do, um, if you want to make zines with cutouts, stamps, collage. So you can make your zines any way, any kind of thing you want. So let's put a little bit of this on here. I think I'll go down with it here so I can put something on top of it maybe. <clears throat> yeah, I like it too, Eileen. Love these days. So many ways to be creative with them. Wish I could have done. The yeah, we've done we've done quite a few. Janet was said that she might do another zine swap, but I, I, I that's not been confirmed. <laughs> you really should tape this down and try to hold it steady, but. We'll do a little carving. I think that'll be chill. We can carve something. What would y'all like? What, what would y'all like to have carved? I'm not going to do something too awfully big. I'll show y'all how to do uh, easy, easy carving. Yeah, I know. I had to get through Inktober for sure, Janet. For sure. I'm trying to squeeze in a lot of information in one day here. Found my rub-ons and plan on using them today. Good, limo. Carve a pillow. A pillow? <laughs> Carve a pillow, noodle? I'll show you all how to if you can't draw. If you can't draw something, I'll show you how to do one. Okay. I'll find uh, I'll find something to use as an example. Okay, so there we go. Now, what you want to do after anytime you do a rub on, what you want to do is take the blank, turn it over, and kind of rub it down. This see, there's a little bit of stuff left there. Don't use that side to rub because then you might rub that off, right? Use the other side, the clean side, and just rub it down. To make sure it's all nice and sealed down. Okay. A butterfly. Butterfly would be pretty easy. Carve a big gator. <laughs> Vicky. I could do a I could do an alligator. An alligator head might be cool. <laughs> an alligator head. Yeah, I'll show you how to do, I'll show you how to do a, a carve a stamp. All right, well, this right here is just with the rub-ons. You can buy, you can, or you can find them all over the place, guys. Um, great, yes. Um, Marie LaVie, as long as she did do the Inktober, won the giveaway. If she did finish it. I don't know if she did. So if she didn't, we're going to do another drawing. Okay, so this book right here. What you mean? What's a zine? The art of making zines and mini comics. This was from 2006. And at one time, the first time I showed this, we all, everybody went and bought, they were on sale for 99 cents on Amazon. Um, Pecola, could you see if they still have any on Amazon or not? But it's a fun little book. I mean, it's normally $12.99 back in 2006. And it's all handwritten. It's all handwritten, or at least it's it has handwritten fonts. You know, I don't know if it's actually somebody actually hand, hand did it. Hi, Rick Malibu. Yeah, Malibu was here. Yeah. Oh, you mean you mean carve Malibu? You know, I really after doing thirty one days of cats, Inktober cats, thirty one days of cats, I kind of want to do something else. <laughs> Let's do something besides <laughs> besides a cat. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is I don't think Marie is here. Uh you didn't have to be here to win. You just have to you have to have finished the Inktober. Okay. 
All right, so these are little comics and little zines and how to make them. What's the big idea or different kinds of how to collect ideas. Here's materials. And remember now, guys, this is before, um, well, there's computer, there's desktops. Carve a paintbrush. Maybe we could do a paintbrush or something like that. Uh, we'll see. We'll see, uh, Joycey. Here's the book. Oh, you found it, Pacola. How much is it? How much is it on Amazon? Pacola's putting the link right there. That's how I was starting to feel about trees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should carve a tree. We could carve a tree. I have carved uh, two or three alphabets. I've carved the Hebrew alphabet. I've carved, um, oh, I've done a lot of carving. I've done a lot of stamp carving, but I haven't done it in a while. Um, I haven't done any stamp carving. I, I think the last thing I did was, uh, the last thing I carved was our, um, a Society of Idea Collector stamp. And this is the same type of rubbery stuff. It's just a different color. It's eleven eighty two. Okay. Yeah, we got them for like two bucks there for a while. All right, so let me just um, here. I'll just cut a stamp. What? Well, I'm running. Oh, okay, here we go. So this was this is I think the last uh, stamp that I carved. I think the Society of Idea Collector logo. That was I think the last one I carved. And I use this on my envelopes for sending out Society of Idea Collectors. And by the way, guys, I am working on some extra little prints and things for the people that have given in the last two weeks and through like November. I have a little plan. I have never carved anything. And she said, okay, Karen. All right. So anyway, let me finish showing you this book. So they have all different little, different ways to fold. Like here are zine formats. The different ways to fold. Some are folded. Some are stapled. Here's the one that we did. This one right here. There's the one we did. Um, <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Stephanie. Uh, dip micro minis, quarter page minis, just different ways to fold and make different kinds of zines. The accordion zine. Uh, I mean, there's just, just so many kinds. And it shows you step by step. And it's all, well, I think it got a little flashed out. Hang on, let me, uh, I'm going to have to zoom in more anyway once we do any projects. But let's make sure we're not. <clears throat> Your master copy. And it just shows you how to do. There's copier tricks. Of course, this is when you had to, you know, you went to the copy shop to make your copies. Everybody didn't have printers in their house. You know, <laughs> back in, I mean, this is, I'm thinking back in the 90s. Now, this is one of my favorite. I want to read this again. Should I read this again? Should we read the Goko, the Goko <laughs> comic? Let's see if I can get zoomed in here. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. <laughs> okay. Y'all want me to read the GoCo comic? This is hilarious. Um, I'm trying to see who put this out. Jonathan Bennett. Jonathan Bennett did this comic. <laughs> okay. Let's see if I can kind of hold it up and go panel by panel. So how many, first off, how many remember the GoCo printers? <laughs> I know. How many remember the GoCo -Go printers? The big light bulb and you flash. Y'all remember the GoCo -Go printers? <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. All right. So we're going to read this. Okay. If you like the look of screen printing, but don't have the space or the money for a real screen print setup, Consider the GOKO Professional Quality Home Printing Kit. I'm going to try to stay under the camera here. At about the size of a shoebox, molded in durable blue plastic, the GOKO is a self-contained mini screen printing kit. 
I was, is it focusing uh, right about there, I guess. I mean, really many. Maximum print area is four by six. <laughs> Not too small for a digest size booklet cover or to add some color to that black and white Xerox zine. Try using multiple screens to make a bigger image. Okay, but now, does the GoCo work? The truth is no one, oh, how does it work? I'm sorry. Okay, but how does the GoCo work? The truth is no one really knows. It's got something to do with light, heat, and carbon. It's not really important. <laughs> you just worry about what you're going to print. Are we good on the focus here? You'll need to make a carbon master using a photocopy machine. Look at everybody standing in line there at the copy machine. Though some laser printers are compatible. And then he has a little note here. I use, uh, what does it say? I use an HP LaserJet 1300. Now remember, this is back in 2006. <laughs> the GoCo uses its own small, inexpensive, and disposable screens. Pack of two for $12 in the little note there. Can y'all see, is it, is it focusing? Let me see. You wanted this printer so, but hi, wee hooty. But it when it showed up on Eileen's t uh, craft show, yeah. Load one of the pre-coated screens into your press. Can y'all see what it looks like kind of there? It's kind of like a big sandwich thing. Here, you can see it better here. Carefully. Place your laser print or Xerox master on the sticky print pad with a blank backing sheet. Lodge two of the odd yellow bulbs, pack of, pack of 10 bulbs, $12. Oh, box of 10 bulbs is $12. Lodge two of the odd yellow balls into the exposure hood and snap the hood into place atop the GoCo. Now shield your eyes, look away, and press the GoCo firmly shut. Two AA batteries engorge the bulbs with enough power to blast the afro wound firmament. Firm, filament with into, <laughs> with into dust in a blinding flash of white light. See, there's a, it, it, if y'all remember it, oh, maybe I should stay back here. That's a little better. And it just did a big flash of light. You smell that? Your screen is now exposed. Carefully dispose of the smoldering bulbs. Remove the screen and using tubes of GoCo ink, apply color to the open areas of your image beneath the transparent film. So you, he's squeezing out the ink onto the onto the um, the image. One distinct advantage of the GoCo over traditional screen printing is the ability to print multiple colors on a single screen. So see, he's got a little assembly line going. <laughs> Look away and pray, yeah. Thin self-adhesive ink blocking foam strips prevent unwanted color from mixing. Build a barrier around your image to keep the ink from being wasted. With your screen, with your screen back in pr place, you are ready to print. The print is just sticky enough to hold your paper in place. That's a big help for multi-screen registration. The moment of truth. Press the handle down just hard enough to feel the print pushing back. Like a little cushion there. Open it up and there it is. It's working. Now, just got to keep at it. Get in the zone and you are a machine. You are a factory. But is it art? I love this comic. It is hilarious to me. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> yes. But that was the GoCo -Go printer. That was the GoCo -Go printer. 
Yes, you had to use a new bulb for each image, not for each print, wee hootie, but to make the image. Like, where's my stamp here? Where do I go with it? Oh, I put it back. Any, oh, here it is. So you can make one image with you can make one image with the light bulb, and then with the you can ink this up and make multiple prints. Right? You can make multiple prints, but each original image took one bulb. Yeah, <laughs> took up one bulb. Anyway, so uh, different projects, different collating, stapling. The staple guy. The staple guy. <laughs> oh my gosh. So there's all different sizes of staples. Y'all know, you know, y'all y'all know what the tiny the Timmy tiny attacher is, right? Well, here I'll show y'all my tiny attacher. Yeah, here's my tiny attacher. <laughs> this is a, this is what a long arm stapler looks like. Okay, so <laughs> for doing books and booklets and things like this is a long arm staple. You can get them at staples. They're not too expensive. If you're going to do a lot of, you know, if you're going to do a lot of bookmaking, you need a long arm. Because because otherwise you can't get to the middle. Like let's just say this is, a, this is your standard stapler right here. If you wanted to staple the center, look, you, can, you can't get to the middle. So you need a long arm stapler where you can get... See, you can staple all the way into a book, right? <laughs> you found a YouTube video about the GoCo -Go printer? Oh, my gosh. I'll have to go look for that. Thanks, Linda. So, anyway, this is all about the stapler, unique bindings, sewn bindings, staple bindings, clip bindings, square bindings, all kinds. Look, all kinds. It's, and it's all in a comic book format. This is what makes it, the book so cool. Then here's a whole bunch of zine samples on the back, zine trading. <laughs> so anyway, I'm showing you this again because if, you know, Janet or anyone does another zine swap, they're fun to do, but they are work, right, Janet? Tell them, Janet, how much work it is. First efforts, wasted paper. They're going to do, what was this one? They're going to do, they're sitting in Java City. My friend Sebastian and I were obsessed with comics and read all kinds of comics, and we would talk about them for hours and hours. So they were going to make their own comic. <laughs> so I won't, I'll just kind of, sh here, let me see if maybe you can read it later. I don't know if you can, it's not focused very well. They happen while you're sleeping. <laughs> Bye, Terry. Oh, wait, Terry. Where's my phone? Here. <laughs> Terry's got to <a> get. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carve something for you guys in a minute. Hang on. <laughs> it's just kind of a hodgepodge day, people. I knew it was going to be because we had so many things to do. Okay, so let's turn my volume back up on my phone. <coughs> Have a good day, Terry. And while I have my phone here, let me show y'all again my daughter Annie out in uh, L.A., her costume. Her, she went as Wednesday <laughs> from the Adams Family, and there's Cousin It. This, is her, this was her Halloween costume, in case y'all missed it the first time. <laughs> You're welcome, Terry. So that was a that was Annie's um, Halloween costume. <laughs> okay, so anyway, it, it's a cute little book. It's a fun book. It's all like hand done kind of feel to it, and uh, it's just I love this little book. Love this little book. Thanks, Vicky. So it's called What You Mean? What's a Zine? The Art of Making Zines and Mini Comics with contributions by more than 20 creators of indie comics and magazines. Yeah. Anyway, so I just wanted to show y'all that on the zine thing because I think I'm going to do a little zine for my giveaways for November. But I'm not going to do any trade. No swapping. No, don't swap with me, people, because I, I can't do that. All right, so let's go ahead and do... 
some carving. <laughs> All right, so the first thing that we got to do is figure out an image. So uh, let me get a funny little piece of, if I have any little pieces of tracing paper in here, I think. Ah, there's it. Okay, hang on. So I'll show y'all how to do a little simple carving. Uh, let me get my tools here. Some of my carving tools. Um... Let's get some clip art or something. Um, do I, I got I literally have hundreds of clip arts. So let's see. This is more alphabet. Oh, here we go. Let's go to this one. All right. So here's some classic clip art. Let's go to this one. Just to make, and I don't know what I'm going to pick here. Because I want to, what I want to show you is if you can't draw anything. Well, I shouldn't say that. Anybody can draw something. But if you can't draw or say you can't draw, you can find you something to carve so let's just look through here and see what we want to carve carve a book i love these little these little moon faces those are cute i guess they're supposed to be phases of the moon but they're fate by emotions <laughs> that's cute all right let's see i'm just gonna flip till something stands out at me Oh, there's another, there's a little wasp. That's a little tiny. I want to do something, else, you know, about this big. About the half, maybe about a quarter, half or a quarter size of the block here. Um, do octopus for your zine. Um, yeah, but I can hand draw that, an octopus, Kia. Um, I'm trying to show you if you can't draw how to do this. So I'm trying to find a clip art for you to, for to to use i mean if i come across an octopus which i can probably find one in this book in this book of clip art this is the complete encyclopedia of illustrations i'm so zoomed in let me back out a little until we get to to, to doing anything because you can't see anything. Okay, maybe one back in. <laughs> this book is vintage illustrations from the 1800s. There's maps, there's skulls, there's like, see the different types of animals here. So there's probably an octopus in here. Um, but I wanted to, there's fish and snakes. What I want to do is show you how to, you know, use, if you can't draw an octopus, I can just draw one. I can just draw an octopus and, and carve it. But you may not be able to draw one. So, <laughs> yes, a new thing to learn, carving, yes. Um, I always wondered why your stapler was on a long ruler. It's not on a long ruler. It's made, it's a long arm, it's a long arm stapler. It's not, it's not on a ruler, it it's, comes that way, Connie. They come that way. So, okay, so here's some crabs, shells. Let's see if I... All right, now we're back into plants this way. So it would have to be this way. Giant fish, snakes. There may not be. There's no, Then we go into alligators, Vicky. <laughs> look out. Vicky, look. <laughs> that one's got somebody by the... <laughs> Okay, so I'm not seeing that goes into birds. So I'm not seeing an octopus in this book. But let's keep going in this book and see what we can find. See, so something kind of easy to carve if so everybody can do it. <laughs> find something to use for all those envelopes you said. Well, what I do for that is my, I usually use my Society of Idea Collector. Um, my Society of Idea Collector. Um, White ball, where do I stamp it out here? This one, I usually put this on my envelopes. Yeah, do you still have the rat? Yep, I still have the rabbit trail stamp. Hmm. Hang on, I'm on a rabbit trail. Let's see if, the, if my carb, I know some of my carb stamps are in here in this box. All right, let's see. Oh, here's one. 
Here's one of my bees that's lost a leg. This one's old. Let me stamp them out for you so you can see. So these are my hand carved. Maybe I should just do all my hand carved. See, I lost a leg. So what I usually do if I use this stamp is then I just take and I just add, add a little leg there because <laughs> his little leg fell off. So there's one of my hand carved bees. Um, let's see what else do I have in here. Oh, here's the rabbit. Here's the rabbit, uh, Joycey. All right, let me move this steak. We're out of my way. All right. I don't know how well I inked it, but yeah, pretty well. There's my rabbit trail. I used to use this on a lot of my um, Happy Mail, my rabbit trail rabbit. What else do I have in here carved? Oh, here's one of my little bees. Where's my big bee? Let's leave the little big bee here. Here's one of my little bees. <laughs> They're fun to do, guys. I'm going to show you how to do it. Just a minute. What else do I have in here? These are some of my new little Timmy ones that I got at um, Tuesday morning. All right, let's see if I got, let me get down under here. Let's move some of these small stamps. Let's see if I can find any more of my hand carved ones. Here's a little dove. And so you can use a magic rub erasers. That's half of an eraser. It's a little dove. Let's see what else I have in here. I'm just trying to find my hand carved ones. Mm -mm. Let's see. I don't have my alphabets in here. I forgot I had this one. I need to pull that out and use that. Here's one of my moon. Let's pull that out. I don't have them all in here. I don't have my big ones in here. I don't have my... Gargoyle's not in here. I don't know what else. There's one of my initials. So they're not all in here, just some of them. Okay, well, that's all I'm seeing in here as far as my hand carved ones go. Oh, look, I should have used that at uh, Halloween. A skelly. Let's see if I can get this to close. No, that's not going to close. I'll have to redo that after a while. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm not sure where the my large ones are. I wasn't prepared to show all my carved stamps. Anyway, so let's get to work here. Put this stays on back together. All right, so let's find something to carve. All right, thank you, Bacola. Yeah, it's a day today. Okay, I like this little guy here. That's kind of cute. Little dog is cute. See these these big chunky ones like this. These are easy to carve. Uh, as a, as if you've never carved before, these are, are simplified. Oh, there's another stamp. Let's put that away. Um, these are easier to carve than than some i like this owl that's a good one i'm going with that owl unless i find something else i mean i've got a whole book of things you know right oh there's some horses do we have an octopus in there oh it's on this page so these are all just clip art books this is before you had the internet <laughs> Before you could just look up anything and you were an artist and you wanted to draw something, you had to have reference materials, right? 
you had to have reference materials. Would love to see the gargoyle being carved. Oh, well, that's a my gargoyle is about this big, and then I have a little one about that big, but I'm not sure where they are. Um, I didn't prepare to find all my stamps. T trust me, I've got hundreds and hundreds of stamps. Um, I like that little owl. It's a good size too. Might go with that. All the animals here. Hens, roosters, chickens. Okay, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go with this owl. <clears throat> All right, so where's my tracy? So what you gotta do, and you do have to be aware of backwards if you're doing lettering. Okay, but I'm not gonna do lettering today. All right, so take a pencil. Here's a uh, this is a, one of those. Kimberly General, Kimberly 9XX. These are the darkest pencils you can find. I mean, look how black that is. Okay. So what I'm going to do, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to have one of these. You can use any pencil. You uh, Anything graphite. Anything graphite. Okay. I'm going to use this just because it's going to show up on camera. But you can use any kind of graphite. What you want to do is... All right, now I'll zoom back in. Okay. We good. Big book as well as see. Yeah, oh, I've got I've got two shelves of clip art books. Janet probably has four four of them. Janet and I both have tons of clip art. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to put this on you, and probably a good idea would be to tape it. Let me get a little, just so it's easier to not move around. Okay, so just tape your little piece. And remember, if you're doing letters, you got to consider backwards. You have to, you have to carve. You have to make sure your letters turn out backwards. When you carve them, this is all the pan pastel stuff is on there, guys. It's, it's, it's rubbed in. It's not going to hurt anything. So this is probably about, I can get, where's my, let me get up. All right, so I'm going to need probably about that much. Okay, so we just want to carve. I just did that for effect. You don't need all that. Um, carve this down out, rather, just just to have a piece manageable. If you're going to carve something really big, you can carve it this big too. I've carved gargoyles that big, but we just need something about this big. This is also about the size of the Magic Rub erasers that you can buy. And you can, that, that materials is as soft as this. The Magic Rub Erasers, that's the brand name, Magic Rub. And those are, you know, just a bit smaller than this. And you can do a lot of carving on a Magic Rub. Speaking of tape, I got a roll of purple tape from Xandra. I love it. Purple, purple like washi tape. What kind of purple tape? I'm, I'm behind on Xandra's videos too, so I don't know. Okay, so here's my, here's my little, Thing I want to uh, carve, so I'm just going to trace it. I'll do all the lines first and take your time. If you mess up, you can erase it. It's pencil.
I'll zoom in more when I start carving. The finer the detail, then you probably would want to use your this pencil because you want you want to be able to get thin lines. These are pretty pretty thick lines, so. You don't have to use every one. You can put what you want in there. A little leafy branch here. Okay. So there's my little tracing. Now what you do, set this aside for a minute. Now what you do is you take your image and you turn it upside down, flip it over, and put it on. Now this is where you don't want to move it, okay? And you can use your fingernail, actually. You can just take your fingernail and scrape it on. I'll just take a bone folder because then you can see it better. So you're transferring that graphite. You really want to kind of tape that down. Don't want it to move. And I think there's two or three of these videos in my pool. I, they're not under, I don't know what they're under. They're not under carving. But I have done two or three of these videos carving over the years. What's the material called? Um, this particular is what Connie sent me to test out <laughs> the pan pastels. It's the Speedball Speedy Carve. And it you can get this... Um, it's, it comes in gray by another, another brand. It, you can get it in gray. This is the Speedball brand. Uh, you can get the Magic Rub erasers. They're soft erasers. They're white, they're white erasers, but they're square. They're square, and you can carve into those. And they're called Magic Rub. Okay, so there. So if you can't draw, then you can do that. Okay. Hi, Jean. You got a new book to show today, Jean, on your show? I just saw you got an Amazon order. Okay, so now you have it on there. Now, I would recommend a Sharpie. Let's see if this one's working. Let me find me a better one. Let's see if I got a newer Sharpie here. Um, I've got some more Sharpie markers somewhere. New ones. Not here, though. All right, let me look in my drawer over here. Hang on. I, thought, I think I have a bigger Sharpie somewhere. I thought I did. I'm looking for the fat Sharpies, but let's see how this one, that's not thin enough. I've got to find a better pen. Hang on. This Sharpie pen, I need something in between. Hang on. Let me just dig in my, let me dig out my pens. Um, okay, this will work. Just gonna go with the Faber Castell Pit medium pen. It's not it's not too small, but I, I really like my Sharpie markers when they're new. But see, that's worn down, so I won't be able to get detail with that. So now you're gonna take your pen <coughs> and you're going to go over it.
Let's do it the tour. <laughs> And you can look back at the original picture if you want and make sure your lines are like really where you want them. I'm just going to go for it. I don't care if it looks exactly like the picture or not. I just want it to look like an owl. Still with the tour? Okay. So see. A little branch. Okay, this this leaf almost got a little too close to the edge there, so I'm gonna make it a I'm gonna make it a little smaller. I'm gonna make that leaf just a little smaller so it's not like right on the edge. Okay, so there's our design based on this, which now is the is the um, flip side of this. See how it's reversed? So when I stamp it, when I carve it and stamp it, it will look this way. But it, it has to be in reverse. It has to be in reverse when you carve it. All right, so now the carving tools. Okay, I'll just go with this for now. All right, so these are actually the official speedball carving tools. You know, with me? Let me just, let me zoom in a little more. Okay. Okay, these are the speedball carving tools um, that come with different nibs, carving sizes, okay? Now, technically, this is made, the handle, the speedball carving tool is made for you to unscrew the back and store all your nibs in here. It's made to store them all, right? That being said, when I'm working, I don't want to hear this. I don't when I'm carving that bugs me. So I don't put I don't save them in there. I put them in a little jar. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start with the small one anyway, which is the one in there. So what you can do, let me show you a couple. Let's see, I'll get the medium size. Okay, so what you can do It's just like an exacto knife. You unscrew this and you can pull out the tips. Come on. They come out like that. See, it's just like an exacto knife. That looks a lot safer than an exacto knife. Well, I use an exacto knife as well. I use both. Always put this on really tight, really tight. You don't want it slipping out while you're working. But I use the, these are the, this is a small, uh, like, wallpaper. We used to use them to cut wallpaper. Then I have the big, these big ones. I don't usually use, I don't use this to carve with. I use this, though, to cut out. Like, you saw me cut this out of the square, you know. I'll use something like a box cutter to cut the square out. And then there's, you just have different, you know, like an X-Acto knives, 
uh, different, you know, whatever. Um, so let me put that back on. Move this out of the way. All right, now I've got to move my camera a little bit this way so that it's closer to my body. It has to be a little close to my body. All right, so what I usually do is it's probably best if you carve the inside first and then the uh, material around it. It's just easier to, if you don't have all this gone, you know, it's easier to do the center. And what you're going to do is you're going to carve away everything that's not black. Everything that's not black, you're going to carve away. Okay. Now, I am going to have to be um, turning and tw twisting it. You know, most times when I'm working on art, I try to stay straight for you guys. But I'm going to have to, let's see here, what, which way do I need to go? No, I need to go this way. Okay, so what I'm going to do, and you try to do, <clears throat> try to carve away from yourself as much as possible. And what you're going to do is just get in there, and, and it does start to be a mess. But what you're going to do is you're going to carve away all the material that's not black. And there's no, there's no putting it back. So if you get if you get something carved, <clears throat> if you get something carved out, you can't put it back. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you kind of take your time, but really it goes by faster than you think. And if you start smearing off your ink or if it starts coming off, that's why you put ink and not just pencil. Because while you're doing this, you're brushing away. You're brushing away the crumbs. And as you brush away the crumbs, you're going to remove your graphite. So you really want to do the ink part. But you do need to, you do need to take your time around the tiny areas here. And I'm, I'm digging in probably about three or four times deep. But what you'll do is after you get a, a bunch carved and you think you've got it fairly carved, then you ink it up and test it. And you can see where you've missed anything. And I'm pulling off. <laughs> I'm pulling off the excess material there. You know, I don't know that I'd recommend doing that. But I'm doing it gently. Like I'm not pulling on it and going to cut myself. And you just know where to where to carve everywhere there's not black line. And you can do some very, very detailed carving. But be careful, like especially around the little eye there. If you if you cut that off, but you can't put it back in. You'd have to draw it in. Like here on my B. Remember I showed you on my B here? I carved this, this, and this was so thin that that leg eventually broke off. So now when I stamp this, I have to draw that leg on. Yeah, I know, right? I'll have to find my my gargoyles. Cuz they're they're like this big. And I like, it just depends on what you like. You can get it so uh, so etched out, and we'll see how much time we have, but you can get it so etched out that there's no residual. Okay, so like this B here. See, I wanted these lines on the behind it to look like this. I wanted it to look like a B in motion. So I deliberately left, and you see I didn't stamp it very well, but I deliberately left those carved lines there. But I could have... Re, uh, carved out all that material and had no no lines around the bee, just the bee. 
same thing for my a uh, rabbit trail. See, this was carved on an eraser, one of the magic rub erasers. Well, you can't see it now, but it used to say magic rub. Um, I carved it to leave like a square around it, but I could have carved away all this material and just had just the rabbit there. And then there's the bee, and I drew his little leg back in. Here's my, where's my bulb? There's my, um, here's my uh, carved Society of Idea Collector. Idea bulb. All right, let's get back to work here. Let's see where I'm going. And it is a good idea to carve in the direction like I'm going around his eye. I'm carving it like in the direction. You'll see when the first initial stamp, you'll see my lines are all going in the direction. But you can continuously remove material. But you want to take your time, especially around eyes and these singular lines. And so what happens is once you stamp it, you can see anything you might have let missed. Am I staying in camera? Oh. And I've seen some professional stamp carvers that you would not believe what they can do. I uh, I just do it for, you know, a little hobby. <laughs> but there's people that can do this and make it look just exactly like the original And you kind of start to learn which, like, you want to point. Do I start, like, at the point or do I work up to the point? Okay, so see the face is already pretty much carved out. Can you see? And I'm going toward me, which is really, you really want to try to learn how to go away from your body, but. And you want to do like light layers. Don't try to dig in too deep thinking, you know, you're going to say, oh, well, I, I, I want that big section gone. Don't just eh, because you'll you'll make a mistake. You'll you'll dig out something you don't want to dig out. So take your time. Take your time and, and do multiple passes. Do multiple passes over the rather than trying to do it out, out in one big fell swoop. You see, it's going pretty fast. Yeah, it's not it's it's not hard, but you know when you 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 when you start you really want to take your time. And you know, I am I am going a little on the speedy side here so we can get it done. But I'll I'll rename this video 
multiple projects and stamp carving so you can find it. Because I don't think I, I don't have, well, I know I don't have a playlist for stamp carving because I've only done it three or four times on a show. But I'll label it in the title. And so, so you see, it's not, look, that's not a lot of stuff coming off there. I've not carved in years. Yeah, I know. It, you, you, you know, you just don't do it all the time. I used to do it more when I was in, you know, mail art, you know, doing mail art and ATCs and, you know, swapping stuff like that. You know, I, I did it more back then. And like I said, I, I'm not quite sure where all my stamps are, especially the bigger ones. They don't, they're not in that box because like my gargoyles, it's not like I use my gargoyles every day. So they're in another box somewhere. But if you don't dig in too deep, you're, you're less likely to slip, believe it or not. It's when you dig in really deep that it can is more likely to slip. When you're doing like light, slight little passes over it, it's just like you're skimming the surface. Y'all see where we've carved? <laughs> well, you can do what you want, you know. <laughs> It's just, I, you know, and I can't say I've never cut myself. I've cut myself with X-Acto knives more. I don't think I've ever cut myself with one of these. Uh-oh, see, I just got a little bit too. I got, I looked away. Can't look away. Don't look away when you're carving a chat. That's okay. I'll be all right. You got you know turn both ways if you want a crisp edge. My uncle does animal carvings in wood, you know, like he's, I think he started with decoys. I think I've shown y'all, I, I should go get something to drink. My voice is starting to get scratchy. Um, show you one of his little shelf mice that he carved. And he has since, he, I don't think he's carving as much anymore, but he said, he, he um, messaged me one day or called me, I can't remember. And, he, and so now he's doing He's doing color pencil. Let me show y'all my aunt. Now the photo, she didn't photograph it that well. She didn't take excellent photographs of his work, but I can see the quality of his work, even though the photos aren't that good. But I'll show you some of my uncle's um, pencil work. So let's see if I can get it to turn. Let me turn down the light. I think it's okay. So here's one of, this is my uncle's pencil. He just started using color pencil. So there's one of his hunting dogs. Um, here's some pheasant. Let's see if I can get it to turn because it'll be bigger. Some pheasant. And these are on eight and a half, I mean, 11 by 14 tone tan paper. So that's his pencil where he just started like within, within a year. He hasn't even been doing pencil a year. 
Here's some geese. Let's see if I can get that. Some geese. And again, her photos are a little, whoops, her photos are a little dark. Oh, hang on, guys. But I think you can get the idea. So there's some geese. And let's see what else has he done. Here's another one of his dogs. I'm going to turn the phone again. There we go. There's another one of his dogs. And just one more. Oh, here's another pheasant. Let me turn it this way so that, oops, so it fits in the page. Come on. Yes, Ian, that you're supposed to work away from yourself when carving. Do, do I do that all the time? No. And then here's a hawk. So these are some of his um, pencil, color pencil work. But, oh, I'm sitting on my foot and it is asleep. Oh, and it's stuck to the, it's stuck to the duct tape. Oh, oh, my foot. Okay. Let me go get something to drink, guys. And uh, I'll bring up his little mouse that I have. Hang on. Oh my gosh, my foot's asleep. So here's one of his little hand carved, I got me some cranberry juice. This is one of his little shelf mice. It sits on a shelf, right? So that's why it's flat like that. And it's, this is all hand carved. It's little whiskers. Isn't that awesome? And he sits on a shelf like, well, let's see. So he sits on a shelf like this. Isn't that cute? I know. So he did this one in 2001, I think. So I've had this one on my shelf forever. It's in a glass case so, the, so that the cats don't get it. But he's done decoy carving and all kinds of carving. So he started doing color pencil. I'd say maybe between six months and a year. And he's in his 70s. He's in his 70s. It's my mother's brother. And so he just started he just started taking up color pencil like a year ago. Well, less than a year ago, six months to a year ago. Because he asked me what kind of pencils I use, what kind of paper, and all that. So don't say you can't do anything. If you're old, you're not too old. <laughs>
Yeah, I know exactly, Michelle. I keep it in a glass uh, cabinet. Carved wooden pieces I've purchased over the years. This is one. Yeah, he's he's really good at carving. But I he's I don't know that he's carving anymore. And I think he wanted something new to take up. So that's why he asked me about the color pencils. So he's used those are Prisma colors on tone tan paper. Now remember, this is my first pass. I'm not sure what it's going to look like till I ink it. Then you can see where else you need to remove material. I'm trying to get in between his little claws here. Um, I think he did sell them at one point, maybe back in the, back in the eighties or nineties, I think he was selling them. I don't, rem I haven't heard him say that he sold anything recently. So I don't think he's making them anymore. Okay. So now I think I got pretty much the first pass of everything on the inside. Okay, now I'm going to start going on the outside. And here's where you can decide. <coughs> Let me get a sip of juice here. If you want scratchy lines showing around it, or if you just want to completely remove all materials. Like again, where's my... Um, See how I left a little bit of scratchiness around? See some of this right here? I could have removed every bit of that if I wanted to. Same thing for around the B. I wanted it to have some scratchy lines, go, whoop, sketchy lines going out from it. But you don't have, you can remove literally every bit of that. Um, this one's in a inside of a rectangle. I didn't stamp them all that well. Now see on this one, I literally carved away everything. Look. See, I literally carved away all the material and cut it away with the knife. So you can see where I, I took a knife, an X-Acto knife or one of my blades, and cut it completely all away. You know, I can do that with this, too, if I want. I, don't, I haven't decided if I want to do that. Um, I can just take my X-Acto and cut the whole thing out. Or I can put, you know, scratchy lines. I'm just trying to decide what I want to do. Probably be quicker if I just cut it all away. Let's see. Let's make sure I have a sharp exacto knife. People walk wherever I want. Okay, so I'm going to cut the whole thing away. Now, this is where you want to be careful because you are cutting deep. Okay. Don't cut the black line around the outside because you won't have a shape. <laughs> and you can make another pass. I can get that big chunk out there and then go back in there and get it closer. And this is a cutting mat, by the way, a self-healing cutting mat. You do want to be on something you can cut into.
and you just want to kind of take a little little sections at a time like that you know Just remove chunks at a time. not looking at chat guys I'm kind of making sure I don't cut myself here okay <sighs> you're holding your breath say oh, I was too Okay, so I think, let's see, there's one little area right here. And once you stamp it, you'll see the see where at any place you need to fix. Okay. All right. Okay, now let's do a test. Oh, another thing we should probably do first uh, is you want to clean this off. A baby wipe or uh, run it under some water. I'm just going to go run it under water and dampen it off because you got little crumbs in there. And this is a Sharpie. Well, it's pit pen. So the ink should not wash off anyway. But it doesn't matter because we're going to stamp it. I just want to get on any of the little crumbs because when you're stamping it, every little crumb is going to show up. Take my jacket, my, my work shirt here and just make sure. Okay. All right. So let's see what we got. Let's see what we got, people. Let's test that baby. <laughs> I love you, faithful. Uh, all right. So I'm going to stamp. And I'm just using stays on, which is a permanent ink. Okay, so let's see what we got here. And you probably should, you, you know, there's cushion. I have cushion pads for it. But, all right, so there we go. There's our, there's our first little card. See, it didn't take too long. Now I can look at it and see, well, I can see where I didn't ink it very well. So, and sometimes it takes a couple inkings just to get up. Baby, no, honey. I'm sorry. You can't be up here. Um, you want to really, you know, get a couple of passes of ink to get it nice and dark. Okay. And if you put it on a cushion pad rather than just your table, you'll get a better impression. There we go. See how it's the blacker, the ink is blacker now. So, yeah. And so what you do now is you look at it and you see if there's any little areas like right under his little foot there, that leaf, that little, um, that little stem or the little vein in the leaf. If we're real careful, we can cut that out. And see, so you can see where you cut. See, you can see exactly where you cut because you got ink all over it in your hands. So if you want anything fixed, 
then you can just now you can see where you need to fix it because what you're going to do is remove you're going to remove any of the black ink from your stamp pad although see those and it's hard it might be hard to see see those cut few little lines in it see those few little lines you can remove that if you want but i like the way that looks see those little lines This is a little messy down here. This looks a little messy right there. So I might kind of clean that up just a little. Okay. It's amazing work. It makes me want to try. No, it's not. See, it didn't take that long. I mean, granted, I've done it before, so I was a little faster, but, you know, it's not that hard. I'm not sorry. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to stamp you out some of these, Connie. I'll stamp you out some little owls and send them to you. Because, <laughs> bless your heart, she tried. She was hoping that this material would work for our pan pastels. Connie stamped owls. I'll send, I'll send you some owls, Connie. So there you go. Let me get a baby wipe and clean my hands. What is it, little princess? I know you want up on mama's table. I know you want up here. <laughs> my car and sale will be here Wednesday. Hi, <laughs> Karen. And I'm just using, I'm just using the one, um, the one tool but you you know a, a, make sure your sh blade is really sharp you think oh a dull blade i won't no you want it very sharp and make sure it's real tight in there to cut the cut around you know cut it out like that <laughs> yeah it's, it is like the old block carving it's exactly like it it's just that now it's in it's like in this you know rubber stuff that's easy to easy to do it's much easier to carve this than wood. And that's all you do. Just trace you a little, trace you a little um, image out of, if you can draw or you don't want to draw something, just find you a clip bar or something, anything, you know, whatever you like and trace it with graphite, turn it over, rub off the graphite. Then after you rub off the graphite, go over with a permanent pin, a pit pin or a Sharpie, um, you know, a marks a lot, something permanent. You want it permanent. And then, and then draw it out on the rubber, draw it out, and then start carving away anything that's not black. Do you round out the top of his head? Okay, yeah, I guess I could do that. Let's round off the top of his head. I think I took a chunk out of his head there. CB. <laughs> let's see. There we go. All right, let's see what that looks like. I'll see if I can find my gargoyles. And again, I should put this on a one of my foam stamp cushions. There we go. His head's a little rounder there, although I didn't get it inked up very well. Does that look better? His head's a little rounder than it is right there, CB. I need to, but I need to. Uh, Get it nice and inked. When I get a bearded dragon, <laughs> I could I could carve a bearded dragon. 
That shouldn't be too hard. You mean the the water kind? Is that what you're talking about? The water kind? The like the I forget the dra water dragons or whatever they're called. So there we go. Did you also do an old man? Yeah, that's uh, Herman. Her, Herm, oh, I can't say his name. I have to see it written down to pronounce it. Hang on. Yes, I did carve him. Let me let me tell you what his name is. Wait. I can't I can't pronounce his name unless I actually see it written down. I don't know why. It's one of those. Um. And someone's probably typing it in the chat. Hang on. Hieronymus. Hieronymus Bosch. <laughs> I cannot pronounce his name unless I see it. I carved him. Hieronymus. I have to see it to say it. Isn't that weird? Hieronymus. Okay, I got him. Let me see. Um, we're, let me see. Okay, here's my other, here's some more stamps over here. Hang on. Ah, there he is. Okay, I found my other. Here, I found another tub of stamps. Let's back out. <laughs> okay, now I gotta readjust my camera. Okay, we'll, we'll stamp these out. Let me put my tools away here. Okay. <clears throat> All right, here's my other, another box of stamps. These are, these are the ones that are not in, um, uh, that are not in sleeve thing packaged. Okay, here he is. So here's some more of my hand carved ones. Okay, so here's, here he is here. So I will stamp him out. Here's, this is one of my, um, you know, on a violin, the, the neck of the violin. Here's one of my gargoyles. Um, these are just some designs. Here's my tea. I have a tea and coffee. This one, though, see how I chipped that out? See how I got too close to the edge? So now you have to draw that in. There's my tea. What else do I have in here? Here's a little cat. Here's another gargoyle. I'll stamp these out for you. Let's see what else do I have in here. Here's my pea pod. I got a pea pod stamp. What else? I'm just looking for my hand-carved ones. See, here's some more of the blocks. This is the stuff you carve in out of. Um, Lisa Scott, I don't think she's still here. This was her first attempt at a carving, and she carved me a moon pie. I'll show you all that. What else do I have in here? It's a little heart and a little pose. And I do have alphabets, but they're not in here. My alphabets are in a separate. I keep those in baggies. Okay, so this is just a design there. It's nothing really. What else do I have here? Here's some more. That's an, just another design. Oh, there's a gear. And you can, if they're thick, if you use this thick material, you can carve on both sides. Okay? You can carve on both sides. Um, here's another gear. Let's see what else do I have in here. This is, I'm not sure what that is. What is that? A leaf? We'll see. We'll stamp it and see what it is. Oh, a cupcake in here somewhere. I don't know where my little cupcake went. I have a hand carved cupcake somewhere. Here's my cupcake. Okay, there's there's probably some more in here somewhere, but we'll go with these. 
All right, let's move this off the table. I hear you, princess. All right. Oh, let me get my cushion because it'll stamp better. I have one of these rubber stamp cushion things. That you, you, you know, it's just foam. And if you stamp on it, it just does better. Moon pie. Yes, I'm going to show you the moon pie. I'm going to show you that. Lisa, car Lisa carved this for me. Lisa Scott. Uh, she was here earlier, but okay. So, yeah, moon pie and an RC cola. If you're in the south. <laughs> and I want to just ink it up really well. And I'm not sure how old this stays on is, so we'll see. Okay, so let me stand up and put some pressure on it. There we go. So she carved me. This is her very first attempt at carving. And I thought that's pretty dang good for a first. Right? So that's my moon pie from Lisa. Let's see what else we got here. I have a few gears. Um, you know, when gears were at all the rage. Everybody was doing everything with gears. So I did carve me a, carve me a few gears here. Where's the other gear? Here's the other gear. I know. I know. I need an RC Cola. <laughs> and really, they need to be stamped a couple times to get a good black impression. Let me stand them on it. Gears. Um, I don't know what this is. Is it a leaf or something? I'm not sure what this is. Or maybe it's just a partial something. I don't even know what it is. Oh, it's a little rosebud. It's a rosebud. Can you see the rosebud in there? I actually need to carve some of that excess away. Look. See, here's the bud right there. See, it's a little rosebud. Okay, so let's see what else. Here's just a little heart. Just a simple heart. This one says, uh, I think this is my initial DW post. Like I made a little, my own little stamp. What time is it? Okay, we're good. Made my own little postage stamp with my initials. Does anyone know that Marka says so? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, here's my cupcake. And see, you can stamp these in all colors. Like this cupcake, I've stamped it in blue and pink and green. I've stamped it in all kind of colors. Let me stand up on it. There's my little cupcake. See how I left the background? How do you do letters? Letters are, you're carving them backwards. But it's kind of the same thing. If you take a tracing and you turn the, you know, you mark it out, it's going to be backwards. You're carving them backwards. See here, look, see the gargoyle? All right, we'll do that. Here, let me get some more paper here. Wait, let me do the rest of these little ones first. Here, here's my little cat. There's my little black cat. Um, here's my, well, I'm not right out of space, okay. Uh, my tea, I have a coffee and a tea. I didn't see my coffee cup. Here's my tea bag, I have a coffee cup. But this one, like I said, I got it too close to the edge. I carved away the material. I carved away the material too close to that edge so that side is gone. So when you use it, you know, if you do this with any stamp that, like my bee legs, <laughs> I had to um, go back in and fill it in because you've carved it away. Here's my little tea bag. Um, 
here's my violin. Um, I want to make sure. And sometimes, like I said, it takes two inkings because you get, you know, the first ink is just getting the, the rubber wet. <laughs> so you need to do it a second time for a good dark impression. And I am, you know, standing up and putting pressure on it. And also, um, I'm on a foam. The Hanks, <laughs> the Hanks JD card bits of the gargoyle in different colors. Carve them in different colors. You mean print them? Print them in different colors? Or you mean like do multiples? Like screen printing multiples? No, I don't think I want to do that, Ian. <laughs> uh, okay. So here's the small gargoyle. Then again, I really want to ink it up well. I'll stand up and give it pressure. The bigger ones, you do really need the cushion. Okay. There's that one. Printed. <laughs> so there's that one. Different inks. You mean use different inks? Well, I mean, I could. I could do like, you know, two or three colors. We could do that. You know what I'm saying? Or here, let me just clean this one off. Here. Hang on. Let me dry it. This is going to make sure it's dry. Okay. Now let me get my. Hang on. Let's see. Yeah, let's try some distress inks maybe. Well, here. Yeah, because yeah, I want some little ones. It'll be easier. I don't know. I don't know which ones of these are working. So we'll just try these. I'm not sure. <clears throat> Got these little little distress inks here, so we can do. So you can't really see where you are. You can, you know, you can see a little wet, but you can't really see exactly. So we'll do some green, some pink, some blue. There you go, Ann, your multicolored gargoyle. Well, here's the thing. I think I know what you mean. Like put green and then maybe pink and, and offset it just a little. The problem with that, the problem with doing an offset with a rubber stamp, you could do it with this. You could do it with this because you can see where you're going. But with a square like this, you can't see exactly where you're placing it. So like here we could do, like here, let's start with pink. Okay, so there's pink. Okay, there's pink. Now if I take blue... And, and do it like a shadow like is this what you're talking about I can yeah I can kind of tell where I'm gonna place it just a little offset from it you need your 3d glasses people put your 3d glasses on <laughs> Okay, so now let's go ahead and do, I got these, oh, I got my pea pod. Let's, let's do the pea pod in green.
There's my pea pod. <laughs> what so what do you do is something called register there? Well, you don't really you don't really do that with these, Ian. It, it's not meant to do that. It's meant for a one print. You know, it's just meant to do a one print. It's not meant to do multiple. You know, I'm not running it through a press where there's exact registration marks where I can run. And, and you, you, it's all going to print anyway, unless I don't put ink in a certain spot. Like if I just put ink on his clothes in the background, very carefully, not get it on his hat. You know, it's yeah, it doesn't really it's not really that. Move this book out of the way. Hang on. It's just meant for one. It's just meant for a print. That's what it's just meant to do. A one off. A one off. Okay, let's do this gargoyle. We'll do this in uh, Hieronymus. <laughs> I just, I don't know why I have to see his name to say it. Yeah, I should do an axital ax, and again, that's another one. I have to have it in a, what do you call it? Font phonetics. Okay. Let's see if this is going to be. I'm standing up and putting pressure. There we go. Mono print. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> One offs. <laughs> All right. So now let's do Hieronymus. And you really want a nice juicy ink pad to do this. And I like stays on just because it's permanent. So if I want to color anything, Ian, if I want to color anything, it's, I can do it because this is permanent ink. All right. There we go. See, I missed a little bit in his clothes. But here's the thing. If you miss anything and, you know, you can go back in there. Go back in there and fix it. No. Oh. So, yeah. These are some of the ones I've carved. I have a few others put away. I really like this one. I re that's one of my favorites. And this gargoyle, too. Got them upside down. <laughs> Um, yeah, my bee, my rabbit trail, my little bee, my light bulb, that's a rub on. This is the one we did today, our owl, my little black cat, cupcake. See the cupcake, let me show you that again. I've done the cupcake, where's my, let's make sure it's. Stays on is permanent, so it usually, it doesn't, it, you know, it stays on. Okay, so let's do a little pink cupcake. Thanks, it's good to see you, Vicki. Just saying. Good to see you. So anyway, guys, there's a little um, stamping. I'll take a picture of all of this mess. How about that? I'll take a picture of all these on my desk somehow. So I hope you all enjoyed this show today. 
Started out a little flustered, but we we uh, soldiered up. Where's the lid for this? It's probably sitting right here, and I don't see it. There it is. Um, we soldiered up. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome thanks guys yeah yeah so anyway i'm gonna do some kind of little zine i didn't get to um i was gonna do a little um you know maybe a little zine with the little you know octopus kind of thing with his little you know tentacles and all that some kind of carries through the whole thing i still might do that we'll see because that was my intention for the one of the intentions of today. But okay. <laughs> Bye, Je thanks. Jean. Jean, are you streaming today? You said you need to get an Amazon order in and you're streaming at four. Janet streams at one. You're welcome. Thanks, guys. I hope it was fun. It's Monday, people. I think it's pretty good for a Monday. <laughs> I love my Mondays. All right, guys, y'all have a great afternoon. I'll get something to eat and get over to Janet's. Unless she comes on early, I'll get over there by one. All right, guys, bye. <laughs>